All right. Preston, you there, man? Well, for some reason, your, your audio is not coming through, because why the fuck would it? No, no, it is not. Give me one second here. Fucking OBS, man. Every time. Ooh, that's bullshit. All right. Say something now. I'm testing. We're good. Okay. Yes. Yes, we're good. There we go. Man, fuck OBS, man. <laughs> Would not be a brain stream without a fuck up. You know it. Several, in fact. We're we're uh, <laughs> we're bracing for many more. Uh, how you doing, man? What's good? I'm good. How are you doing, man? Oh, I'm fine. You know, I can't complain other than dealing with streaming bullshit. So, um, of course, you and I are having a meeting of the minds. We're going to be looking at our good friend John Enter again. Yeah. Uh, this is what brings us together, <laughs> just making fun of this fucking loser. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> there's something special about two people bullying a single man. <laughs> but uh, I mean, he he, you know, he deserves it. Serves him. He deserves serves it. him right for trying. Fuck him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Should have just given up like the rest of us. <laughs> exactly. Fuck this guy. Um, so before we, uh, we get into it, one of the things I wanted to do that didn't end up happening was I was trying to find a stupid book and there were a couple things I tried to do. Of course, I tried to get it for as little money as possible through various so means. Zero. zero. Zero was the starting point. And then I realized his book is so bad and so shitty that people haven't even pirated it. Oh my god. <laughs> and the only people who've read this fucking book were actually supporting the goddamn man. Oh shit, Dr. Negus B. Wilden, five dollars. We eating good tonight. We certainly are. Thank you, Dr. Negus B. Wilden. Negus B. Wilden. Man, good name. <laughs> um, but yeah, I holy oh, shit. Another from uh, V Mer I can't pronounce that. Uh, the last Mr. Enter stream with the CIA was really, really funny. Looking forward to this. V. Mervales? Or Mer Mervais? I don't know how to pronounce that. Is that en français? Ah, who cares? <laughs> but thank you very much. Greatly appreciated. Um, very cool. Very cool. But, like, right. I couldn't find a copy of this goddamn book at all. And That's, that's sad. It, There's, like... <laughs> There are worse books that are, are pirated. <laughs> I can only imagine, at least. Like, I don't know how bad this fucking book is, but... I mean, I've heard that it has spelling errors, and it's got a <laughs> shit plot, so... God damn. Well, I mean, the reviews on Amazon are fucking merciless, but I did not buy it. I, I contemplated it, and uh, I believe you called me retarded for even thinking about that. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, <laughs> I did. <laughs> I just want to give the people what they need and what they want. No, I've thrown away a lot of money. I spent, like, $300 <laughs> to make pro drink fish tank once. Yeah. Fish tank water once. That became I a... wouldn't spend a fucking <laughs> dime. On oh, Mr. Edger's fucking book, you know? Yeah. There's a point where you gotta, like, look at something like, do I really want this? Do I want this on my no. bank statement, no, you know? You, no one no one would ever want that. Exactly. It, it, it's part of the reason I never bought fucking uh, into King Ass Ripper's Patreon so I could get his videos. Because, like, listen, I think Ass Ripper's funny, yeah. but do I want to give him $40 to look at his big fat gut, you know? Oh, <laughs> yeah it's like you gotta draw a line somewhere right like uh, shit, i'm gonna have to explain that to god when i die that's the thing you're, you know? oh fuck if you make it up there yeah good fucking luck man i've seen your super chats <laughs> you see my <laughs> you think you're gonna make it up to the fucking gates <laughs> i'm hoping i can finesse him that's my plan here I'm like ah you seem you seem like you're sorry <laughs> so <laughs> Oh God! If God was Canadian, just send me to hell at that point. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Hard, hard. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. sorry. 
All right. So. We're blocking it on our, on, a, on the stream, but I want to point out at the bottom there, there's the dead meat versus nostalgic critic rap battle. <laughs> I want to kind of go through all the fan like ERBs at one point because uh, uh, I didn't even know that those existed weird. until recently. You did. Dude, they're only shit. Yeah, I, I did that. Yeah, the bar the bar is exceedingly low already. All right, so we've we've got a animatic or an incomplete a animatic of one of the episodes of Growing Around. Uh, just to show kind of the proof of concept here. So let's uh, let's take a look. See <laughs> the context. <laughs> He's got to start it off like already oh, going like okay before before I show you this, they were created under certain conditions. Series pilot no longer set in stone. The cope, like he does this shit all the time where he he, he insulates himself from criticism. He do, he can't take criticism from what I can like, from what I can tell. What it's obvious that he can't, yeah. you know. Yeah, he made a he made uh, a video all about getting bullied, which we will watch later. Most voices are not final. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how shit this is. <laughs> I've not seen this. Are we there yet? No, shall we? It's oh, the volume's <laughs> going down. <laughs> uh, God, Depression got yeah. cancer from that. God, it, it's the fact that it's his voice. <laughs> no, no, Sally. He really does. He like Butch Hartman. Um, this, that's what I'm getting from this guy. I don't. <laughs> I don't think he does. I know LS Mark's obsessed with Butch Hartman. I think he's Butch. the he's the main like cartoon guy who LS actually Mark. likes him. But Ellis Mark? Yeah. Isn't Ellis Mark kind of like okay though? Or am I thinking of a different guy? I don't watch a ton oh, of you're, cartoon YouTube. You're YouTubers. probably thinking of someone different. Ellis Mark's a... He's a whole can of worms we're not getting into right now. Yeah. <laughs> a no, lot of these not yet. fucking <sighs> cartoon reviewer guys are. now? Are we there yet? Sally, you're the one driving. Oh, oh yeah. good gag. Does that mean we're there yet? Crosswalk, Sally. <laughs> My parents could drive better than you. Jesus Just Christ. an average day in summer way. <laughs> this is shit. Yeah, this, this is bad. Yeah, I, I want to like sit here and make jokes, but like, there's nothing to work no, on. It's, it's just, it's just, shit. it's just painful. Well, we'll give this a little bit more, but yeah, I'm, I'm just, it just feels like a root canal. Oh yeah, this is definitely in the CalArts style, you can tell. Oh, we're- we're not- we're oh, not- we're not, we're not doing we're this not again! again. <laughs> Fuck me, dude, no. <laughs> I think got, like, PTSD from the last time. <laughs> Happy birthday! Gotcha this time. Sally, my birthday was yesterday. You were there. I have no idea what you're talking about. You planned the party. I may have planned a certain party for a certain person, but all I remember is that certain person. Zuki, is it? Go, go ahead. Oh, oh, oh I was going to say, Zuki wants us to play the fucking song. <laughs> Fuck no, dude. No, man. <laughs> I I listened to it once, and that is all I ever need to for the rest of my fucking <laughs> life, dude. Fucking horrible shit, man. You know, for a guy who does nothing but watch fucking cartoons, you think Enter would have some idea of, I don't know, how to make a joke? But all of these are shit. Well, <laughs> you know, the funny thing is a lot of people who make cartoons don't watch cartoons all day. And I, yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, they, they, they draw a lot of their influence and inspiration from the absurdity of life. You see, that's the trick, is being a well-adjusted yeah, human who's also kind of yeah. creative. That's not Edger. No. Edger just watches cartoons all day, and they complain about them online, and sends angry... <laughs> SpongeBob would never do this in season one. You, how dare you? I know you wrote the splinter. Get out of here. It's bad enough I have to deal with one birthday a year. I don't need to deal with two. Max. 
I know I screwed up your party. But I'm gonna promise you that today is gonna be the best. No, the bestest birthday that anyone ever had in history! Sally, you don't understand. I think that I do. I just didn't do a good enough job yesterday. So I'm gonna do better today. That's not it. You know, I feel like if this was made by anyone besides Enter, yeah. Enter would tear into it and be like, this is shit. Yeah. It's not funny. Why don't we get to see how his birthday got ruined? You know, shit like that. The characterization's paper thin. The comedic beats don't land. Yeah, he would rip it to shreds. He'd go like this. Fuck, he would. But, but he wrote this garbage, so it's god tier day. Right, <laughs> right. But, and, and he included the disclaimer that if you have any complaints about it, you're wrong. I'm right. Yeah. What would a birthday be without a breakfast in bed? A pretty terrible birthday, if you ask me. Well, well, yeah, film. Like, plenty of cartoonists watch cartoons for inspiration and learn from other cartoonists. But what I'm saying is they don't watch cartoons to an obsessive degree. Like, do you think Martin... Like Andrew does. Yeah, do you think Martin Scorsese just watches movies all day? Like, the only person who got away with that shit was Quentin Tarantino. And he... I guess he was autistic enough to pull it off. I don't, I don't know. Um, and we all know how that ended. A lot of, a lot of feet in his movies. Uh, another donation from Dr. Negus B. Wilding. Uh, if you look at all the people who work on Growing Around, they all just happen to be autistic. Coincidence, I'm sure. Well, you know, shout out to the autistic homies, man. They're trying. Like, nothing wrong with they're being autistic. They're but they're trying. Yeah, nothing wrong with being autistic. A man is measured by his decisions. Not by his autism. Sally, you Back know your mother and I have to get ready for school, right? This won't take long at all, I the promise. Fuck? Well... Please. So he has to make his... So, they don't can't make any life decisions, but the adults still have to give the kids food. Yeah. They are just slaves. They're just indentured servants to these fucking small children. Do you think they live out in a cabin like slaves did in slave times and like... You, it's something like little 10-year-old girl goes, here is some pink feet for all you guys for working so hard. Now I'm, thinking, now I'm just imagining, like, <laughs> your name is Princess Sally Ford. <laughs> James Randall. <laughs> then just gets whipped again, you know? Your roots, but with parents. Yeah. You didn't buy me candy at the store. Get on that post, you damn dirty. Anyway. You damn mongo. How could I say no to that? Goody! How, Extra how cheese, no pickles, and just no a no. tiny stab of mustard in the middle with a double order of fries. They're still warm! Sally, I know what you're trying, but... I will eat this burger. Yes! It's working! So it'll get you to just leave me alone. Imagine how good it's this just, second course It's is. just so fucking dry, too. Like... It is. <laughs> Like, let's let's skip ahead to how horrible the parents' lives are. So the mom's bringing in pizza. These parents look like they are, are like they crave death. They want to die. You know, it's funny because like the whole thing about this fucking uh, series, right, is that like the kids are in charge. This is no different than if the adults were in charge. You know, it's yeah. the parents submitting to the will of the child. I could see it. I like just being a normal fucking thing. He's doing nothing with this concept that he's praising, you know? Well, yeah, it's like... like he's with fucking stupid. And with parents and kids, there's still, like, mutual respect, and kids still have autonomy. Like, mm -hmm. Enter totally doesn't understand the dichotomy that kids and parents have, because... At least in a healthy way. Yeah, because kids still get to, like, make decisions and speak up and stuff. He's just made the parents slaves. <laughs> In the... <laughs> okay, so... Zuki said 30 years as an adult. <laughs> oh, God. This is your new home now. There are plenty of kids to take care of you. <laughs> Sally, don't you think this is a bit. Much? Got them one of them I strong 30 year olds. I'm selling for you for See? 20 Jolly it's Ranchers. Exciting. Dad, I can't reach the tree. Can you help yourself into the. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have talked back do it that this time. The turbo aliens. They're doing it through their crystal ball energy devices. Oh. This is why you need to get this order right. Oh, the recording, too. Just oh, the, yeah. the fucking reverb. 
how do black families work in this world probably just as badly as they do like yeah, a fucking 12 year old boy goes yeah i'm going out for some uh chips i'll be back would he get gunned down by like little white kids yeah. dressed as cops still that's the question <laughs> Some ten-year-old girls like he was a great adult. He always went to work on time. Right, they're really, really <laughs> allergic to cheese, or was it pickles? I don't remember. And how exactly do you know that? It's not important how I know what I know. What? So there are children forced know, to work minimum know, wage you know? jobs. And what <laughs> That's I know fucking is that shit, dude. Guys well, like I guess like how they're failure adults, they're also failure <laughs> children <laughs> in the this world. <laughs> Imagine being bored and you're just immediately forced to work at fucking McDonald's. Especially fast food workers that screw up their orders. You look like you got a bunch of buzzards in your britches. I thought bringing you here would cheer you up. No matter what I do, Max. That is someone who does not have a southern accent and can't do a very good one. Oh, and they're at the hair salon. Get it? Get it? Because that's where adults go and they're drinking virgin daiquiris. I fucking hate this guy. I it's hate his so stupid dumb. concept. This is so dumb. They like two weeks ago or something. I thought he loved the aquarium. What kind of kid doesn't like riding on dolphins or scuba diving with octopi? <laughs> that sounds. Yeah, my <laughs> Dr. Negus says my son left for chocolate milk and candy Newports. He never came back. <laughs> he never came back. <laughs> he just leaves on his big wheel and never returns. Yeah, Dad, I'll be back in like 30 minutes. Just go hang out with <laughs> your daughter, you know, whatever. Uh, just do your taxes. I'll be back. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, that's a question. Yeah. Do they, do they have to declare the adults as dependents in this world, you know? <laughs> Man, that's brutal if the parents still have to do all the bookkeeping. This oh, they probably do. <laughs> fucking enter. They don't want to do anything. <laughs> Either that or the kids are fucking up their taxes so bad going like, Well, I have fun all day. Can is that tax deductible? No. No, it is not. No. <laughs> it's such a, it's such a shitty concept. And it's the fact that he doesn't even do anything with the shitty concept that just makes it even worse, you know? It's so fucking bad. <laughs> I hate this. This is shit. Yeah, if he showed like the ramifications of a kid-run world and how the kids had to navigate these situations and how the parents had to, like, maybe gradually reclaim control of the world. I don't know. Like, that's still bad, but at least it's an idea, right? Like, there's nothing yeah. here. He he just he just goes like, ooh, what a role reversal. And had yeah. no concept beyond that, but we're we're one said wonder brought up an actual good point in the fucking uh shit. Yeah, like saying that uh why even have a kid in this world? Right, right? you're just you, giving you're giving birth to your slave master. Yeah, you you become subservient like immediately after you give birth. Like, man, it, like imagine fucking giving birth and the doctor shows up and he's twelve. And he's like, well, you just have to poop out the baby. That's that's how babies are born, right? Uh, imagine having, like, a heart problem. That's probably why we don't see any old people that enter. Yeah, the world, they all you know? die. <laughs> they all die, you know? <laughs> they all die, like, within... They hit, like, 59, and it's pretty much lights out. Uh, so, I wanted to touch on this very briefly. Uh, but the co-creator of Growing Around said some incendiary remarks, and Mr. Enter had this to say. Uh, due to several concerning derogatory comments made in recent weeks, the Mr. Enter team... Come on, nigga. It's you. The Mr. Enter... <laughs> it's you. Team! Me me and my fellow autist that I gaslit into fucking making like, this. Yeah, uh, like someone I tricked. Will no longer yeah. be associating with Kyle, a.k.a. Naolf. What? Ugh. what? what? I'm guessing that's, that's his like username. username. Yeah, pretty bad name. And we will be removing his credit from growing around. We no longer support Kyle, and we condemn his derogatory <laughs> statements <laughs> and beliefs. This is like what Nick did whenever fucking Dan Schneider came out as a fucking creep. You know, <laughs> like what is this? You know, like it. It just shows how like um, 
how oblivious Enter is to this kind of stuff. That, like, he's basically just, like, copying what he inferred from a big company doing something similar. Because, like, if Ky if this Kyle guy wanted to, he could probably actually fight this legally or something. <laughs> Which, yeah, Enter, I I Enter would not know how to handle this. So, no. I guess there is, okay. there is an art. Does, Enter has, like, no clue how copyright works in the first place, as far as I can tell. So, so there's an archive of, I guess, Kyle was reacting to the Hogwarts legacy controversy. And Kyle goes, if buying this game genocided trans people, I would be bankrupt trying to prevent the mind disease from harming the next generation of children. No. Oh, Holy fuck. Real, that's a real <laughs> incendiary shit, Christ. Yeah, Calm that's, down. yeah, okay, okay, champ. Okay, bud. Man, God, no, buddy. I hope school is closed uh, after he tweeted that. Um, and then, I guess, some some tweet about a felon doing something horrible. Uh, what is with this anti-black Twitter lately? And Kyle responds, it's called anti-white genocide. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Holy oh. fuck! Okay, I can... I can... I can't believe it. I can side with Enter. This guy... Probably would have fucked up any business for you. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, I understand why Enter got rid of him. Yeah. But Enter's still a dork, yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> really. It's like, and yeah, it's like Enter wasn't going to go anywhere with this stupid concept, anyways. But if this guy's your writing partner, holy fuck. How about we use your anti hate hate terms and keep stoking racial flames in America? <laughs> Oh, this guy is looking for trouble. Holy yeah. shit, he is not trying to hide it. So canceled by Mr. Enter. <laughs> Looks like my old friend decided to cancel me out of the blue. Good luck. <laughs> I've been <laughs> I've been out of the social media hellscape for four years. Isolated my career to an anonymous account. There is nothing to cancel. Holy fuck, this guy is just as bad <laughs> as Enter, if not worse. Uh, I've supported no, but... a dozen a dozen gay friends. Who has a dozen gay friends? Gay people? No, no, we don't. No. We don't like each other that much, man. I'll be real. I thought you guys just all congregate. It's like a hive mind. You no, know? I'd say you should educate yourself, but you're better off not educating <laughs> yourself. <laughs> I currently live with a gay black roommate. This poor guy just like door swings open. Hello, my nigga. Nope. Hey yo. <laughs> to get him away from his abusive family. Why why my family always punching me for being gay? <laughs> my current employee is trans. Oh my man, career. this is this is peak. I have a black friend behavior. Yeah, he is. He yeah. is coping so fucking hard. Shit, you know? this is good. Even though I disagree with their beliefs, <laughs> my my current job for the last four years has had me interact with thousands of LGBT people. Keep telling yourself and your audience that I'm not progressive enough, and though and those are the ones I have good relationships with. I'm not even going to mention the mountains of bad, horrible, vile, predatory gay supporters I've met IRL and in online it's, communities. It's probably because you go around on fucking Twitter, you know, being like, you fucking starting shit. Like, yeah, he's, God damn. I mean, this guy is like just picking bad situations to be in, being on Discord he and is, Twitter he's... exclusively, probably. Yeah, fucking retarded. So he, he continued. Oh, man. So we'll get to the John part here. Uh, okay. Keep farming SJW sympathy off me, the friend you haven't seriously interacted with since 2017, John. Edit for your autistic ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I don't like that this guy's making me laugh. Not accepting calls from me anymore is what a normal person sees as a relationship falling off. See how far this stuff gets you when the hungry LGBT vultures catch, oh, a, <laughs> catch a slip up from you, or perhaps Ugh. target any friends you might still have left. <laughs> I've defended Mr. Enter from his harassment, misunderstanding, and hate all on my time on this account. Kiwi Farms, I even tried to give <laughs> <Damn penis. penis. laughs> Peter. 
Hello, my name is Daft Penis, and today we're talking with a bigot. Uh, an interview <laughs> to push the message that Mr. Enter isn't some hateful, angry man that he seems like on, on his videos. So it sucks to know that John's the exact kind of hateful guy to not even dare message me in the same scenario of misunderstanding. Just throw me to the LGBT wolves without the question. Gay wolves. The gay you wolves. Throw to the gay wolves. You threw me to the gay wolves. Actually, I'm a trans wolf. Uh, not even a goodbye to your friend who you've known and talked to online for 10 years. Man, 10 years of online friendship? That's like one year of real friendship. That's crazy. It's like six months of co-workership. Yeah, and obviously this goes on and on. <laughs> so we're not going to keep reading this. It's, but I, this guy is <laughs> as autistic as Enter, and he is coping really hard. I, I like, fucking love him talking about the LGBT wolves, and I can't lie, yeah. Daft Penis is Daft, pretty good. <laughs> Daft Penis is the funny fucking name. It's a lot better than his stupid fucking name. I can't even remember what it is, like Niar something. Uh, what was it? Yeah. Yeah, Na Naolfa. Naolfa. Yeah, that was it. Really rolls off the tongue, huh? But, yeah, I thought that that was worth looking at. I just... <laughs> I, I can't imagine, like, running a business where both people are, like, that are com horrible. <laughs> Complete brain-dead fucking morons, dude. <laughs> they are fucking... Stupid. I'm being cannibalized by the LGBT wolves. Uh, the LGBT wolves. That's such a good fucking. <laughs> That's a good band name. So we've got yeah. stuck in the ringer, which was a request of yours, and then we've got a, a request from Zuki. Um, but stuck in the ringer is a. <laughs> I... <laughs> this, this seems fucking. You you it's implied it was like so really shit. really shit. I, we've seen his worst, but this is up there. I, I, he deleted it, and if he's deleted something, it's worse than his average content is the thing. Good lord. You know? So, yeah. She, it's uh, bad. <laughs> so, buckle up, my LGBT wolves. We're about to embark on a journey. It says it all, doesn't it? Wow, did I get a lot of requests for this one. You guys really seem to hate this episode, and watching it again, I can definitely see why. Everything it does is wrong. Beyond wrong, actually. So, by popular request, let's tear Stuck in the Ringer a new one. Wow, right. we are off to an amazing start. I, I love... <laughs> he starts with pointing out the rioters and shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. that's like, that's so wild to me that he, like... He knows so much about the personnel who work on cartoons, but, but he doesn't know about the process of making a cartoon at the same time. It's like... Yeah, yeah you've got two people doing storyboards and three writers... And usually writers are drawing on cartoons. It, like, this isn't an obscene amount of people working on a cartoon by any stretch. But he it is, but I mean, Spongebob's a huge show, so yeah. it makes sense. Yeah, it's like he acts like, like cartoons are made by one fucking person. <laughs> it's like a whole staff of people. I remember our first writer, Zoo Service, and his other masterpiece, A Pal for Gary. And it looks like... No, I don't! Remember this cartoon writer by name, you fucking moron. <laughs> hey, he's, he's like, whenever these guys try and get like a new job on like some other show, he's he's gonna be there. He's gonna be waiting for them. He's like gonna go in the interview with them and just point out every bad episode oh. they wrote. You know? Well, well, well. If it isn't Zoo Service, I recall an I... episode of SpongeBob you wrote. I didn't like that. So what? So what? This guy wrote a dud of a fucking cartoon. There, there are like two halves to these episodes. There are like four hundred episodes of this goddamn show. Like shows been going on for like it says eighteen seasons up there. Jesus Christ! It's been going on a long fucking time. Yeah, yeah. So like the point though is that fucking most your average person doesn't know the name of a screenwriter. Like this person doesn't want to know the fucking name of a screenwriter. Exactly. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who the fuck wrote some Marvel movie. You know, they did their job, and they did it either poorly or well, right? And that's a way more yeah. high-profile job than writing a cartoon. Just by, by normal people metrics, writing an important big movie 
more important than writing an episode of SpongeBob. It's fucking eleven yeah. minutes. Come on. He's I mean, you, you can get an Jesus Oscar for writing a fucking big movie. Meal. You don't you don't get shit excited. for writing a bad episode of SpongeBob. The only veteran who helped make this beauty. Hot off his work creating the Splinter, we have Sean Charmotts. And then <laughs> he brought Harrison. up the guy who wrote the Splinter, Sean Charmotts. <laughs> oh my god! Like he knows so much about these guys' lives. <laughs> And at the creepiest fuck squids visit, and we'd eventually go on to have oh! a demolition doofus. It looks like we got ourselves a dream team here. He it is starts with so mad. taking a shower until he over dramatically drops the soap because the writers think that that's funny. Ha ha ha! Nothing of substance happened. Then SpongeBob Nothing cleans of his substance. brain because the writers don't know jack shit about comedy. When the shower's done, <laughs> wait, SpongeBob wait. cleans himself. He was like, nothing of substance happened. It's a fucking cartoon. Yeah. An episodic cartoon at that. It's yes. meant to waste time. He's like, no, why are they putting jokes in my sh cartoon show? Yeah, and I can't lie. The the gag of washing your brain with a bar of soap as a sponge, kind of okay. Like, I, I don't think he knows about comedic setups and, and delivery. Uh, we watched his fucking anim anim yeah. animatic. Yeah, it, I, it was the driest fucking thing. It was like eating Melba toast and drinking the sand. Like, come on. Up off with a laundry ringer. Where's the substance? Where's the substance? Use towels, perhaps? Maybe drip dry in the fucking ocean? SpongeBob gets dressed and is prepared to go to work. But Why is he so mad? He bounces into his tub to pat out the He's mad because he, he used a fucking duck, laundry ringer instead of a towel. Soap, which gets him stuck in the ringer. He tries to use his tongue to get himself out, but ends up breaking the handle. Hey, this kind of reminds me of real-life situations when people can't get their hands or other extremities out of nooks or machinery. <laughs> That's That was the whole reason I wanted us to watch that episode, just for that fucking line right there, dude. <laughs> this this reminds you of, like, a horrific workplace accident? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Well, you gotta remember, Enter's never worked a fucking job. No, he hasn't! No, he hasn't. He hasn't had to see someone, like, get their hands crushed in machinery or something. He's just read stories about it. He watched that one fucking movie. What was it called? Like, 24 hours or some yeah. shit? Yeah. Yeah. He yeah, watched that one. Like, hours. Yeah, with yeah and he's like, oh, that could happen to me. Can you imagine? Wow. It's a good thing I don't have a job. <laughs> Yeah. They spent days calling He's like, oh, that's why I don't want a job. I don't want to get in a workplace accident. In pure desperation. And these have yeah, to be yeah, like just that talked about topping up the Patrick head. Patrick comes in looking for his rubber duck. Okay, what season is this episode? <laughs> he, like, actually referenced 127 hours. Yeah, he did. Did you not hear it? Yeah. No, yeah. no, it just took a second to register. It's like, like, this guy doesn't even recognize that, like, that's such an exceptional situation that that man that, is, that man like became an advocate for disability agencies around the world after that and they made a movie about him that's how exceptional of a situation that was it was an extreme situation fuck it the guy the guy was like it was a miracle <laughs> that he survived and fucking this guy's like oh that happens all the time if you work a job Someone cuts their fucking hand off to get out of a printing press. Ah, uh, yeah, see. selling. Yeah, this guy's Patrick unfunny, but he's also just fucking stupid and a dork. It takes Patrick every cartoon way too seriously. To That's why we're looking yeah, at it. It's, it's, it's forever. Yes, just he scrutinizes really everything that way too much. And speaking of that, you know what I find interesting in these SpongeBob torture porns? He's actually really close to his original personality in this episode, especially. So the glue hardens because the writers think that crippling someone is funny. Of course, Spongebob's only concern is getting to work, which, yes, is very similar to his original characterization. Patrick does manage to help slightly by breaking the- Can... I... This guy's so devoid of a sense of humor. Like, yeah, yeah some of these gags suck. I agree. But... Not every joke lands, but... They're trying, you know? But, like... And you're not funny. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like... Where does this guy get off being uh, an arbiter of comedy? Like, but can you imagine him watching an episode of Tom and Jerry and going like, so the writers think it's funny to hit a mouse with a hammer. And I guess they think it's, they think it's funny for the uh, cat to have its tail chopped off. Wow, this yes. This reminds me of, <laughs> having a, of being a cat and having a tail chopped I don't know. Yes, but... animal abuse. That's hilarious. Of course. And oh my god, we have four minutes left. So Tom hits Jerry in the head. 
but it ricochets and hits him in the head. Ha ha. Look See, at this is Tom torture porn. He loves that term, <laughs> Tom, torture porn. Have you Tom noticed torture that? Porn. It's, it's slapstick comedy. It's just someone getting hurt. Getting hurt is funny. It's it's one of the most like basic carnal reactions someone will have. Bonk head. Ha ha. You know? You know? Wyvern asked a question for you, uh, Brains. Does Patrick have the pass? Patrick does not have the pass. Why would Patrick okay. have the past? They don't even have black people down there. He's black coated. How so? He's unemployed. <laughs> Ring her off the floor. So SpongeBob gets to work and starts making Krabby Patties. You know what, Depreston, you're all right, right buddy. Does misery. And then this happens. <laughs> all right, dumbasses. Or should That's I say okay dumbass? Joke. I think it's safe to assume that the one writer from the Spinter wrote this fascinating piece of the episode. From what I can gather... What are you talking about? That's, that's like, kind of an okay gag. And they yeah, landed so... like pickles, you know? Come on. Like, what, what's he, what does he expect of this episode of Spongebob? Why are his expectations this lofty? It should be better. I expected better from you, Sue Service. Service? <laughs> That's ridiculous, man. Right? I I think I I think I missed um a, a tip. A Give super chat? Second. Yeah. Right. From Victor uh for five dollars. T M D W U. What the f oh that's most definitely what's up. God damn it. These people really think I watch Combs, huh? <laughs> I watch Cobes. So. I I do not. <laughs> it took a it took a second for my pea brain to to put that together, but yeah, that's that's very much what's up, Tubes. I pretty much only watch the guy when I'm on a rogue stream, and I usually get disappointed seeing him be disgusting. Because he's he's awful. He's such a creature, man. Like I don't know. He had some pretty great moments. Like he was, uh, I, you may have heard of it. He was saying the N word a lot on stream. But he's like, and I'm saying it with the A because I, I'm not a racist, Tubes. I'm not using the ER. Maybe I, know? maybe I have to watch some some Cobes highlights. It, I just, I just don't. Just care. watch Boglum Chronicles. That's okay. it, you know, or right. bite sized Cobes. Don't watch actual fucking Cobes and make you kill yourself. I, th I think it's because I went down the wrong path looking into him when I was. Uh -huh. But yeah, I'll, just need I'll do that. Like the DoorDash fucking shit was so funny, dude. Just kept I, I do remember that when people were like just sending them like lettuce sandwiches and shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was good. But anyway, let's get back to this. Let's Tom go. Trumps is like Dave Polsky if he was terrible at slapstick and really, really hated people. An important rule of slapstick <laughs> is to never, ever harm the eyes, fingernails, or toenails on camera. Who the fuck made that rule? Uh, he did, right now. Yeah, like, what's your source? What are you talking about? Didn't, uh, they, the fucking Three Stooges, like, set each other on fire and shit. Like, yeah, what are you talking about? The, they they yeah, punch each other in the eye constantly. Yeah, that was, like, one of their little things. Or, yeah, like, fucking one of them would set another one's tie on fire. Like, you know, what are you talking about, you jackass? You've also you got to be very no careful with teeth. Those are extremely enter. sensitive parts of our bodies, eyes especially, and pain towards them will automatically make us cringe. It is possible to do eye-related slapstick, like say someone is trying to open a switchblade and looking really closely at it. If you want it to be funny, when the blade goes off, you've got to move the camera somewhere else as that guy screams. That's a way scarier scenario than what no, happened. That's not funny. What, what's the joke there that he gouged his eye out? That's Fuck. fucking. That's fucking terrifying compared to what happened to Squidward. Yeah, he got some must. He got some mustard in his eyes, and his eyes turned into pickles. <laughs> yeah. That's way more absurd than going like, uh, you are yeah. you're holding a switchblade extremely close to your eyeball to examine and it. It goes off. <laughs> like, what That's the fucking fuck, horrifying. You, <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> From Derek Iverson, who seems to have some bizarre psychological horror fetish. When someone asks for a refill, Spongebob jumps up and causes the cash register to fall on his foot. Once again, the pain is raised to cringe-inducing levels. Then we have shenanigans that eventually ends with the cash register emptying on the floor. This, of course, gets Mr. Krabs to come into the picture. Help! I think you have quite enough today! Remember that line. Spongebob gets kicked <laughs> out of the crust- Take a note, Depreston. Remember that Take line. 
Hold on, let me find a pe- pen and paper real quick. <laughs> quick, take that down. <laughs> Write it down. <laughs> you said it with such urgency. You're going to want to remember okay. this law. You've helped enough. quite I, yeah. enough today. I think you've helped quite enough today. All right, we, we got that locked in. Okay. We got it. All right. Wrote it down. <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> Rusty Crab and bumps into the cause of all of his pain. Patrick tries to cheer SpongeBob up instead of, I don't know, taking him to a hospital. They go to an ice cream parlor where SpongeBob is unable to eat his ice cream because the ringer is apparently stuck on his esophagus. Wow. That's just great. They're implying that SpongeBob is eventually going to starve to death because of that thing. <laughs> Come on, man. How, how are you this fucking joyless? Yes, Patrick is a dimwit. That's his main characterization. Yeah. You think you think whatever like do you remember that one episode, like the whole Wumbo episode and like everyone else turned tidy and bikini bottom or whatever? Yeah. yeah. Do you think he got mad at that episode? Because he's like, why are they breaking all of SpongeBob's insides? This implies he's going to die from internal bleeding. <laughs> well, that's just ridiculous. Wumbo isn't a real word. The word that you're looking for, Patrick, is jumbo. The writers clearly made a mistake. You know, if you can't swallow Why something like ice cream, that tube is closed it's tightly. Like... Oh, and would you look at that? <laughs> Zero. Eat SpongeBob's ice cream like a good, good friend. Next, they go to the <gasps> carnival, is... where we're treated to some scenes so where can't you're play any of the games right. or ride yeah. any of the rides. It's he even like... gets a shiner in the process. Hey, he's profoundly miserable in that. Like, yeah, Patrick. Patrick's a jerk. He's arrogant. He's a dumbass. Right. But he's also That's well-meaning, and the juxtaposition is that despite being well-meaning, he fucks it up. Yeah, that's that's the comedy. That's that's the root of all of his jokes. Why can't he wrap his head around this children's cartoon <laughs> and its paper-thin characterization? I don't know, dude. I, don't I, know. I desperately want him to review like a complicated character drama or like a serious movie. I've gone like, oh, yeah. oh, great, Vito Corleone is sick now. It's only been half an hour. He's the Godfather. Why <laughs> did the writers do this? Now the Godfather's dying? Did we just time skip without a, without saying that? So Michael <laughs> Smad- <laughs> Michael smatted his brother Fredo for being stupid. Well, if you told him what to do properly, Michael. Oh my god. It's yeah. fucking shit. It's so <laughs> bad. I just We gotta we gotta get him to review Goodfellas or something. <laughs> Writers, I don't care who the hell you're doing this to. Torturing a character is not funny. Speaking yes, of it is. torture, he's yes, torture. Like, for winning a torture. Like, not torture, it's slaps well, the humor. You send your friend flying, but instead of looking to see if he's okay, you go and play darts. Some goddamn friend you are. Finally, <laughs> he's SpongeBob so has had enough, and he knocks the cotton candy to the ground. Now you know how I feel about you ruining my life. Well said. So SpongeBob finally tells Patrick off. If if Mr. Enter was in charge of SpongeBob SquarePants, it would just be moments like this of SpongeBob flying off the handle violently. <laughs> getting I'm not, mad at people. Like just getting mad at people like finally SpongeBob has stood up for himself and his stupid arrogant friends can't do anything about it. There'd be no he can't humor. stand up he can't stand up too much, otherwise it becomes like that one my little pony so that he reviewed. Where she was just me to everyone. <laughs> and just got such weird. Yeah, and just got such stupid and bizarre fucking rules that only make sense to him. Yeah, he just he just moves the goalposts like willy nilly, yeah. all the time. Silent Wyvern donated one dollar. Patrick does meth. Yes, he does. Yes, I wouldn't does. be surprised. Yeah, man, he doesn't even wear a shirt. Average meth user. Average meth user. Hey, it's exactly like that other scene. Of course, the townspeople angrily oh, shout that's what we went down, dude! Running excitedly. You... Yeah! Hey, hey, the, notes came in handy. the notes came in handy! The notes came in handy, let's go! <laughs> I'm glad we remembered that. Towards their I'm, I'm glad yeah, we had I to remember it's okay for a to yell at someone six for minute some video. Accidental vandalism, but it's not okay to yell at someone for ruining your life due to their incomprehensible stupidity. Oh. You deserve what you've gotten. Come on, we're out of here. Not... 
screw you. Screw you all. <laughs> I knew Zeus' service would shine through eventually. In fact, I think he was in charge of the rest of the episode. Oh, did you see that? Go back. There was a little words at the bottom. I knew Zeus. Entire... I'm almost, I am almost <laughs> ready to declare him the worst writer in the entire animation period. It's like the scarlet letter. If you get slapped yeah. with Mr. Edger's worst writer award, you're just, you're done. You know? <laughs> you know, honey, ever since that Mr. Enner review came out, I've, I've been ruined. I can't get work in this town anymore. They they really take that guy seriously in the industry. I don't know what I've to do taking, with my life. I've started taking long walks into the forest with my rifle. Not certain if I'd come back out every time. <laughs> I've been unemployed for four months because of that enter bastard. Service would shine through eventually. In fact, I think he was in charge of the rest of the episode. Patrick tries to stay mad at SpongeBob, but is unable to. He runs to SpongeBob's house, breaks in, and finds something that wouldn't be out of place in a horror story. I guess Derek. Yeah, truly terrifying. <laughs> SpongeBob with a five o'clock shadow. <laughs> My God, <laughs> a single man lives here. <laughs> <laughs> the horrors of being a bachelor. <laughs> this is fucking horrible. And that's the joke. Is that it's been one day and he looks like he's been he's disheveled, right? Like yeah. that's the gag. It's so scary, guys. <laughs> can can, can you imagine? Eric ain't done yet. No, I can't imagine. He's been unemployed for like what thirty fucking years. <laughs> Wow, that was weird. That was like perverse. <laughs> yeah, that was a. <laughs> that was like straight up kind of upsetting. And now he comes to the, the body in the episode. The nameless one, do not come to this episode of SpongeBob. Okay, before we move on, tears are essentially <laughs> salt come. water. They live in the ocean. Do you dumbasses see the oh. fucking problem? They should be fired! Isn't it great that they're trying to teach kids such valuable lessons in life? Alright, you three. What's the word I'm looking huh? for? Dipshits? No, that word is too good for oh, you. Too. Assholes? That's not quite right either. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh, God. I gotta... I'm not reading that right now. Give me one second. What? I gotta... Well, because it's gonna disappear mid-sentence. I have my Streamlabs open as well. Okay. Uh, Mr. Enter gave my dick and balls a bad review. Said I was the worst writer in animation history. I lost my home. My wife left and took the kids. Now I spend all day doing meth with Patrick. Thank you, Silent Wyvern, for the two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you deserved it, honestly. Thank you, YV. Greatly appreciated. Yeah. I, I think fucking Enter also came to his home and took all his 40k shit as well. So Yeah. Yeah. yeah I just, on Suicide Watch. Just scooped it up in a bag. He doesn't even know which armies go with which. Fuckers, no. I'm just gonna call you three excuses for humanity until I can find a description that properly suits your crude, idiotic, and juvenile talentless asses. It's so weird that he's playing, like, is this Silent Hill 2 music, you said? This is Silent Hill 2, yeah. Okay, how can, how can a guy who can't fucking grasp an episode of Spongebob understand the subtext and, like, storytelling like, in Silent Hill 2? I don't know. He, he, I think he listened to it once, and then he's just gonna go play more roller coaster tycoon while he listens to this song. <laughs> is this pyramid guy a metaphor? What is this? What is reality do you three live in? I really want Why to know. I'm genuinely curious. Like, like... In this reality, it's conventional <laughs> it's wisdom that it actually. Oh like, great! Okay, he's sexually abusing the mannequin because the writers think that's funny. It takes an adult to write for children. What am I saying? Oh that's God. that's not fair. I bet the even the for real. Hell, infants would. My dog would. You mindless, degenerate hacks. You three may want to thank your lucky stars every dude. second of every day that whatever the, the fuck you sold your souls to was stupid enough right to give you your jobs. Because if you lose your jobs writing this trite shit, you'll most likely never work again. Not Holy fuck, Hector! <laughs> Jesus Christ! You'll <laughs> never work again! He's, he's not done he's, in Hollywood! He sounds straight up insane here, just going like, listen, listen to me and listen to me good, you motherfuckers. The next time you write a goddamn cartoon, make it good, or you're fucking done, I swear to God. I've got connections, buddy, alright? I, I can make heads fucking spin. The next time you write a cartoon, 
It better make my dick hard. <laughs> Not just in television, but in any job. I don't know anyone who would lower themselves so substantially to even... Oh, goddamn. People are actually donating to me? Phil Nerd, $3. I'm glad the two of you are covering the... Oh, man, I'm so bad at reading these in real time. I should really just do what Rogue does and have a segment at the end. But I usually get $5, so I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Nerd for $3 said, I'm glad the two of you are covering this because if... I just watched his videos by themselves. His dull voice would have put me to sleep. Well, I I agree. This guy, this, this guy's guy got a pretty bad he's voice. Not, he's not good. <laughs> but not only is his voice dull, he's just got no good takes. They're all shit. It's it's crazy that this guy has like three hundred k subs for how horrible he is at everything. <laughs> so the nameless one talked about how uh um enters like if. Fucking Doug Walker and uh, Nostalgia Critic were one and the same. It kind of. I mean, Andrew doesn't get why Nostalgia Critic is uh, supposedly funny. Yeah, you know, he doesn't understand that it's a character. He's he, just like, yeah, they're they're one and the same. Enter Enter reminds me way more of Linkara, where he has like no oh, self awareness whatsoever. Yeah, Doug Walker's at least a nice guy in person. That's the thing. You yeah, know? Doug Doug seems pretty cool from everything like I've. I've heard of him and seen of him. He's like, yeah, he's kind of a, a dork, but he's like an endearing dork where Linkara yeah. would go like, well, what reviews did you enjoy if you said you liked his reviews? You know, you'd go, I'm a really he's big like, fan. Hmm, what what reviews are your name favorite? Name five of my reviews now. <laughs> if you can't, then you're not a true fan. So this is... Mr. Enter's COVID-19 documentary series. And uh, boy, is, oh, it a, is it a lot. <laughs> I also want to point out, though, yeah. before we go, he's yeah. ripped off a lot of Doug Walker. Not only like did he just straight up steal clips from him, but um, Nostalgia Critic would do like these top 11 videos. I don't know if he still does them. He used to yeah. whenever I watched him like 10 years ago, fuck. Yeah, because once. Anyways. 11's better than 10. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, he's like, I like to go one step beyond. I think that was the joke. Mm -hmm. Enter, in his early days, it's one of his deleted videos as well, also did top 11 videos. Oh, God. Which imagine, I like. Uh, imagine you ripping off a bad up. joke. It's not even a very good joke. <laughs> yeah, but it was fine for fucking nostalgia critic because he at least came up with it you yeah know? he came up with it and like doug's got enough charisma that you can kind of go huh, all right you know like yeah. especially early doug walker yeah, you know yeah i i i never understood much hate about him like even beyond the controversy stuff i always thought he was pretty harmless yeah like you know but anyway yeah, this is this is a, a let's, let's, pandemic series he has going done. To a global let's, crisis. Let's. A pandemic caused by a novel coronavirus has spread around worldwide, infecting at this point over two million people, and it has killed more than a hundred thousand since being discovered in December of 2019. Originating in the Wuhan district of China, it has been dubbed COVID-19. Like the um, the thing that's going? just absurd about this is that it's Mister Enter talking about this shit. That is, imagine we like all died from this fucking virus, and then aliens come explore our world, and this is the only evidence they have. <laughs> it's, of our a, it's a cartoon reviewer making a conspiracy doc. Although many people simply yeah, call it the would... coronavirus even though there are many other versions of the coronavirus. These are generally the facts that most can agree on, and these are the only facts that people can seem to agree on. It's been in the media's eye since at least the middle of March, and different people and different governments have had vastly different reactions to the virus. It's quite clear that many people claim to have an answer, but really have no clue what the hell they're talking about. In the meantime, we've been dealing with mass panic, extreme government actions, and all manner of conspiracies cropping up, such as people attacking five G towers because they're very desperate for an answer. Let's talk about people before we talk further about the disease. It's important in this context to understand people, to understand the reaction to the disease. We're not going to watch this whole damn thing, right? It's like 30 minutes. Now. Yeah, no, fuck no. I, I just kind of wanted to hop around these videos to okay, see I if there's anything strange in them. Um, I, 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 I just, I just can't believe he did this. Like, that's that's the thing that blows yeah. my mind, is that he went, I have to do something with my platform as a yeah, cartoon you reviewer. A, you need to stick with your fucking 
SpongeBob Talking reviews, my guy. Uh, I don't we're fucking. Past one million. We're past one million. Uh, is it three million? Is it four million? We might eventually hit. How far are we talking here? See, this is what happens when you don't give me the full truth. Now I need to doubt every single thing that you say. <laughs> <laughs> there aren't any answers, so I don't believe anything. By the way, even the current six feet standard does not apply to actions like sneezing, coughing, or even talking. Six feet is too close to talk if you want to avoid risk of infection. So yeah, the only way to truly avoid infection is to stay home forever and ever. I mean, that's what the Hollywood- You already do that, my nigga. Yeah, just- Like, honestly, if you were just to, like, fucking review, uh, I don't know, what's a long-ass cartoon? Like, fucking One Piece. You just watch One Piece, you'll be fucking done by it by the time yeah, you finish reviewing yeah, it. Yeah, the pandemic's over dork. by the time you're caught up to One Piece. Yeah. Like- <laughs> If you watch it, like, at a moderate pace, like, one or two episodes a day, you'd be good. Nah, he'd, probably, he'd finish it in he'd, a month, dude. Yeah, he'd, 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 he'd would... watch a hundred episodes in a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, like, yeah, it's, it's mind-blowing that he went, like, someone has to expose this injustice in America. It right. will be me. Oh, stars and speculation, Alex Jones would fucking tear Mr. Enter's head off. <laughs> Enter's... Th- I, yeah, it could not be the same room. Yeah, I think I think Alex Jones might it, say what you will about the guy. He might be like the moderate voice between the two of them, like akin to when he had Kanye on, and he was like, oh, "Wait, you like Hitler?" <laughs> yeah, I think he's dope. He had hard clothes. Wait, you 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 agree with Hitler, Kanye? <laughs> You mean like the clothes, so right? much money that they You're never have to work designer. a day in their life? Not no. Not the clothes, the ideas. <laughs> no, I think everything Adolf Hitler did when he ran the Third Reich was dope shit. I am Kanye West. Yeah, that was a good interview. They're even breaking. Not controversial the rest questions. Of us have? Get the I mean, it's I simple. Had, dude. You've heard the me. Is... Our grandparents were asked to go to Fuck war. It. Bill Gates we're already knows where I am. Just let him put his microphone to me. Scientifically, yeah, it's easier to get jab. people to go to war than it is to get them to do nothing. Literally, the only thing you cannot ask a populace to do is nothing. That is just about... You do nothing! You do <laughs> nothing! No, I review cartoons! I stand between... <laughs> you, you do nothing for society. Mr. Answer, you you contribute nothing. <laughs> you contribute shit reviews. Like, like, real talk, I don't even think the guy has friends. Like, I know that sounds mean. No, he had that one friend that, <laughs> that he threw to the LGBT. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, but, you know, okay, so he has, he has had a friend. But th- the point is, it's like, I don't think that Mr. Enter is a good son. I don't think he's a good friend. I don't think he's a good member of his community. No. Uh, and he certainly is not a good content creator. So who is he? A, a fucking loser who stays at home and probably orders too much DoorDash. Factually. So where does he get off telling other people that they have a right to uphold? I'm not, I'm not saying that if this was a good situation. It was not. But he is not the person to be the voice of this cause. <laughs> he is the voice of the resistance. <laughs> oh my God. We need to stand up to the oppressor and watch SpongeBob cartoons and complain about them. He's so we're gonna we're gonna watch a bit of his his lockdown story. His lockdown story. No editing this time around. Feel free to podcast. Listen, this bird is a morning dove. I I assume the morning dub was very upset about the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's no, try this again. No, does not mow his lawn more than like once a fucking month. Rather, and... That's all I'm saying. Well, you mean his parents' lawn? Oh yeah. Does he live with his parents still? I I don't doubt I, it. I assumed he lived in like a trailer park or something. I. I would have to look more into his horrific lifestyle. Thankfully, he shares every single bit of information about his life quite yeah, openly. Yeah, <laughs> 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 and it was fueled by anger I mean, and that's disgust. That's a cool bird. 
It's not going anywhere if you still want to watch it, of course. But I do understand that that might not be the best approach to get to other people, and to get them to understand where you're coming from. You have to show them where the anger is coming from, or else you're just going to be shouting into a thunderstorm, which doesn't help anyone with anything. I mean, people who agreed with me from the start probably were encouraged by hearing someone else having their same beliefs, but that's not very important to discourse in the end. So I thought that I'd tell you guys my own lockdown story. Why does he talk like this? Why, like, he sounds like he's on the verge of tears. Why, why does he always sound like this? It's very emotional for him, Reigns. Don't make fun of him. He's sharing with us his lockdown story. I, I can say with great certainty that this man does not, like, go out and do anything. He doesn't, he's never played a fucking sport. He doesn't go to places with his friends. I know that his, his definition of a good time is watching at home. <laughs> four <laughs> seasons of Spongebob in an evening. That's, that's how this man lives. His so, entrance is just so predictable. Like, I, I can guarantee you, whenever he was in, like, you know, like, middle school and they made him, like, do, like, the soccer matches, like, in gym class, yeah. he would always sit by the goalie's net and just play with the fucking grass. That's what he would do. Nah, man, like, I, part of me thinks that Enter was the kid who wore shoes that weren't regulation so he could sit on the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> like, he'd show up wearing combat boots and his gym teacher would go, like, God damn it, John. I told you to get sneakers, kid. Oh, I, I don't want to. I don't want to do this. I want to talk about the new SpongeBob episode. You're yeah, Negus, you are right. His audio got better, you know, but, but what he does this for a living. My audio is pretty shit. I think it's a little bit better now because I got a new mic, but we got, I also uh, don't do this for a living is the thing, you know? This guy, yeah, this guy does it, like, professionally for lack of a better term, like, he's a big enough, uh, like, he's a big enough YouTuber that he should have great equipment. Yeah. But, uh, $10 from Ketamine, nothing like watching autism is pre-workout for the gym. Keep it up. Evil gang. Evil gang. Evil gang. Uh, anyway, back to this morning, though. And where my feelings are coming from, where all of this anger and disgust has boiled up from. I just need to figure out where to it start. It is a cute bird. I suppose I should start with, I know how scary this virus sounds. I've been following YouTubers yeah, since I mean, I guess that's one thing you on this since January. So a nice picture of a bird. Nice along. picture of a bird. It gave me time to repair. In mid-February and earlier, I was... That's probably the most successful thing he's done. Then. It also gave me a lot of time <laughs> to worry okay about the virus of itself. Of I wondered about yeah. all kinds of what-ifs. As always, I do think about my own mortality in this situation. And <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck? I'm like, I might be dying soon. Your own you know, mortality? Aren't you like? He's like a young man. He's like thirty, <laughs> which is, I guess, young, youngish. In, but in like, the, in the grand scheme of life, you're supposed to make it to fucking eighty something. <laughs> Like, but to be fair, at least he had this revelation because of, I guess, COVID and not, like, watching fucking a Spongebob episode and then being like, this made me realize I could die at any minute. Yeah, you know? it would have been, been upsetting if, like, uh, a scene in the Loud House made him question his life. It would have been <laughs> funny as fuck. I can say that much. So we'll, we'll skip ahead. I don't know if there are any... Uh... The situation it. isn't looking very good. The mental health issues have been a little bit harder to deal with. My own and those of my friends. I know many people with depression, anxiety, or some other disorder. Some of them, Based I didn't quote know Phil. they had it, but the situation has hit them a lot harder. And some of them have been in a darker place than I've ever seen them. Even I have had depressive symptoms come out of remission. Even though recently I've gone through my first winter since high school without being depressed. So... <laughs> That's that I can't lie, as someone who's navigated mental health myself, that's such a grim fucking way of framing it. I'm going like this is the first year I haven't had clinical depression. It's since high school. <laughs> fucking Christ. So like you know, let's let's really kind of look at the data here, Depressed. 
the, yeah. co the company that enter keeps. Do you think that these are well-adjusted, healthy people? No, I think enter is the chat among them, right. which doesn't speak good for the rest of them. Yeah, we, we already talked about Mr. LGBT Wolves. So, like, yeah. that tells me that his friends are probably already mentally imbalanced and probably also don't have access to any sort of supports whatsoever. Well, or or they've just been so complacent to not even get help when available, right? So, yeah. like, I, you know, I, I don't think that the the pandemic is the only factor here for weird reclusive shut-ins who watch American animation. I don't really see why I don't see why it affects them. That's what they were already doing is sitting inside and watching fucking cartoons. I think it <laughs> I think it would like it probably affects their like minor conveniences going to a comic book store, going to a video game store, uh going, going to, to a Walmart. restaurant, going yeah. to Walmart, right? Like, the, the four or five things that they do probably got affected. Me, when this shit happened, I got, like, I got laid off for, like, four months because of the pandemic. And then once my job came back, I had to, like, work via Zoom with clients, which was not good, you know? I imagine. Luckily, I work in healthcare, so my job security is fucking infinite. Oh, uh, damn. I, I mean, I work in mental health, so it's, like... <laughs> that's not real health. Uh, yeah, it's not real. <laughs> it's, it's, just it's pseudo health. <laughs> yeah, you guys just gaslight people. And you just you gaslight like, like white girls and wow, thinking they have problems. Wow, you sound sad as shit. Hey, would you like to? I don't know. Show up for twelve paid weeks to. Uh... <laughs> wow, you <laughs> and at the end of those twelve weeks, I give you Lexapro. <laughs> like I dangle it like a, a horse with a carrot. <laughs> <laughs> Chase the antidepressants, Karen. You're going to have to forgive me when I say this. If you think that it's That's... anywhere close to feasible that we can stay not real health. for You're 18 not months at a bare minimum because you are not getting a vaccine faster than that, you are a privileged fuck and one of the most <laughs> disgusting individuals I've ever had the displeasure of knowing about. Some people around here have an idea of what poverty or living paycheck to paycheck is. or having. You don't receive paychecks. You don't receive paychecks. You receive, you receive YouTube money, and you receive a tugboat. Welfare. You do <laughs> not tugboat the tugboat. You, you do, do welfare not welfare. receive paychecks. You've never been in this situation. You're not the breadwinner in your home. You do not pay bills. I know this guy. He probably his mom probably like gingerly asked him to buy his own food. You buy know? his own what? Buy his own you food. Like buy his own groceries. Yeah. Like she probably said, like John. You know, things are a bit tight. Would you mind chipping in? What? And spend my money? I need to buy more box sets of Spongebob. They just came out with the Wild Thornberry DVD set. I have to buy it, Mom. Mental issues that we can't cope with alone. It's, it's my job, right Mother! I taught you to stop taking things for granted. I can understand some people's frustrations. During the protest, you've probably seen a clip of the doctor complaining about how he can't get to work because of Michigan's Operation Gridlock. He goes on, what if it was your grandmother? What if it was your infant son or daughter? Well, Mr. Doctor, what if it was your infant son or daughter starving to death? Because you don't have to say Mr. with a doctor. <laughs> We're done here. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck he's complaining about. Yeah, he's, he's just rambling. He's just, he's just rambling. He's just rambling. So we got, we got this one Suzuki recommendation. <laughs> This is Mr. Enter interacts with black people for the first and only time in his life. What? What is this? I'll tell you <laughs> Those what are this black is. People it's it's the big that. thing that's going to blow all the competition out of the water. You, you may want to be sitting down for this one. What am I talking about? You're watching this on a computer or a toilet or whatever, and you're, you're already sitting down. This is a real show. This is the realest show. At least, that's what you figure it... Enter must be so fucking mad that this got funded and he could never get funding for his shit. <laughs> like, never, ever, ever get money 
for growing well, that's around. That's probably why he shits on these shows so much. He's still mad about that. You're absolutely right. If you know right. how Comedy Central has been treating it, they're really pushing for this to succeed. On the website, at least when this review started, the show is advertised above South Park, and during primetime, it's been airing right after it. You may have even seen an ad for this very show on one of my own videos. That's how algorithms work. Maybe you even saw an ad for this show on this video right now. Only time will tell if this review is advertiser friendly. Comedy Central. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> I'm not ready for Mr. Enter's based takes. Firstly, the thing I don't like about this show is there are too many minorities. Trusted this show so much that they renewed it for a second season, two months before it even aired. Before I go on, can we please agree to stop doing this? Please. All the doing networks, what? stop Gas doing it. I've noticed this trend a lot new shows? Lately, with networks giving shows a second season before their first one even airs. The second season is something that you need to earn. To be fair, <laughs> you need to earn. Your second season. What if what if a network just believes in a show? Yeah. Like a lot of times the second season's a lot better than the first, is yeah. the thing. Yeah, know? the first season's kind of that like like training awkward. wheels awkward phase, yeah. yeah. And the second season usually like like uh always sunny for instance. Like the first season was okay. Yeah. It, it wasn't until the second season when they got Danny DeVito that they really started to hit their stride or Yeah, uh, yeah. Trying to think what other shows are like that. Uh trying to think of cartoons so Enter can relate. Um Yeah. Well well the one he's showing, Star Versus, had a very weak first season and had probably a moderate to good second season, right? I thought I thought it ended really badly, Star. Uh, it, it. it did. It did. And I I don't want to talk about the show anymore. <laughs> but uh or like Dexter's Lab's a very good example too, where that show took a while to kind of figure itself out and then it got very good, right? Like you think that kid in the red hoodie has to deal with ice chasing him down every day? <laughs> <laughs> His name's Marco Diaz. What do you think? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh yeah, Trailer Park Boys is a very good example of that. And where like the first season was them just kind of figuring out the characters. And then the second season, they have a lot of stuff established and they can write more structured stories. So, yeah, maybe that's what they... Like a show like Legend of Chamberlain Heights, you can tell it's cheap, right? Yeah, it's, it's a string sh shoestring budget. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a shoestring budget show that they probably could justify two seasons of it. Yeah, they're like, okay, we'll give you two seasons, you know, try and make it work, you know. Worst case scenario, we lost a bit of money, you know. Yeah. South Park will more than pay for that, you know. Right, right. They're, they're not taking a loss believing in that show. Ted yeah. Comet for $2 says, Mr. Enter be mad that the idea he stole from a failed pilot failed. Oh, yeah. he Didn't he, didn't he bite growing around from something else? Did he? I'm not but sure. Ted, Ted if, you we... can, if you can tell us where he bit it, we'll look into that a bit. Because that's, that's kind of news to me. Yeah. But that's good. Hell yeah. Wait, they, they greenlit the second Hellraiser film before they even had the first one out? That's surprising, because, like, I, it makes sense for a show, but I feel like a movie's a hell of a lot more expensive. Uh, well, yes and no, though. Like, Clive Barker was one of the biggest authors, like, on Earth at the time. So, I guess that's true. Like, they knew it would succeed. He was, like, up there with Stephen King in the 80s. So, like, that's different than this situation. It even frustrates me when it's done with good shows. Star vs. the Forces of Evil, for instance. It was given a second season before the first one even aired. Don't get me wrong, Star is one of my favorite cartoons of the decade, and I'm glad that it did get a second Apparently, Enter stole the idea from a Shorty McShorts shorts pilot. Okay. Did, did he do a review on this? Like, did he put it well, on animated atrocities and, and go like, first... this idea would never work? She <laughs> said, eventually. But there's no way that anyone could have known that ahead of time or even this pilot the episode. Sword. It could have had a great pilot and then bombed horribly on the way down or just stayed mediocre. In fact, for the first few episodes after the pilot, it kind of seemed to be going that way. You need to earn a second season. I mean, if we keep giving any random show a second <laughs> season as soon as we hear about it, it might mean that we're stuck with, oh yeah, Legends of Chamberlain Heights. This right, show shattered so two misconceptions of mine. Number one, 
I thought that adult cartoons might start to improve and not all be Family Guy or South Park wannabes after watching BoJack Horseman and Rick and Morty reach massive- <laughs> He brought up Rick and Morty, dude. After watching the two most Reddit cartoons I could possibly bring up, and I thought adult cartoons were held to a different standard. An intellectual <laughs> like myself watches BoJack Horseman and Rick and Morty. Oh my god. I've grown to fucking hate Rick and Morty. I remember watching that, like, you know, it was like a... Like, whenever it was first coming yeah, out. Yeah, It was like, oh, this is good. This is top tier. And then I stopped watching it after the fucking Pickle Rick episode. That was the last one I watched. That was, that was like, absolutely their jumping the shark moment. Like, everything else is just kind of negligible after that. And, like, BoJack Horseman, every single season is the exact same setup of BoJack's an asshole, people call him out, he eventually has a moment of lucidity, but then he relapses into being an asshole, and it compounds, right? And that's what people call a deep fucking cartoon. A fat old horse alcoholic going, Oh, why do people hate me? Maybe if I have sex with this minor... Oh, why do people hate me? Maybe if I, <laughs> maybe if I kill my point? friend. <laughs> Is that a plot point that he fucked a minor? He, yeah, he attempted to, yeah. Oh god, it really is a fucking show about Hollywood people. That's what you get for your Netflix subscription. Success? Oh, Guess not, since South Park's diarrhea gets two seasons on first sight. Maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe this show just got two seasons right off the bat because the execs of Comedy Central were afraid that it would eat them if they didn't try to appease it. Because the other misconception that this show shattered was that no mainstream adult cartoon could be worse than Mr. Pickles. Which also managed to get a second season, by the way. I've complained a lot about adult- Also cheap. Like, he doesn't, he doesn't ever factor that in. That show yeah. that is cheap and easy to make will almost always get greenlit. That's why it like Aqua Teen ran for so long because it was yeah. it was and then, like something cheap. like Invader Zim, which was like really successful. You know, they didn't renew it. They only did like what two seasons, three seasons yeah. on it. Two seasons. Yeah. The third season was shelved, and it it's because that show was extremely expensive. Yeah, it was good, but it was way too fucking expensive. Yeah, but, no, Andrew's just confused. He's like. Why don't they only care about quality? It's because they're a fucking business, you right. goddamn moron. <laughs> they're trying to make money. <laughs> yeah, if the ratings don't reflect the the budget, then, like, why are you doing it at that point? Uh, it's... Even successful shows that are making them tons of money, they try and cut the budget on. Uh, Walking Dead, season two. Yeah. They significantly cut the budget on that. That's why half the fucking thing takes place on the farm. Yeah, it's, it's like a bottle season, essentially. Yeah, because yeah. the first season was, like, really well shot and directed and stuff and then you can tell it it sharply declines over time yeah. and obviously well, I mean, there's spikes but yeah see i mean season one had the uh the guy who directed the thing in charge yeah. of it yeah no. uh frank not, not the thing yeah. no not the, the, thing, the mist the mist yeah frank darabont yeah. yeah but um ted comet two dollars it was yeah shorty mcshort shorts block uh and it was called flip flopped was okay i'm gonna look I'm going to look this up. Do we want to review? <laughs> Are we going to watch that if we are, can find it? Are we going to Mr. Enter that? <laughs> if we, yeah, if we have time. I mean, this shit, I can enter, enter is just so fucking engrossing to me. This guy's a mess. Adult Swim <laughs> so but Comedy stupid. Central is a lot worse. It. At least even the worst Adult Swim shows have their own unique identity. They might be the identities of serial oh, killers, but does. they have their own identity. He didn't review it. Okay. He reviewed it? Shorty make short shorts, right? That's what you said. Yeah, yeah, and and specifically flip flop was the short he he ripped off. Oh, I see. It's a bunch of shorts. Uh, yeah, it's like an anthology exactly. block. My mom. Uh, what was it called? Too many robots. Digit. Uh, flip flop. My mom married a yeti. Ugly. Fabulous. Too many robots. Digit. Conclusion. Oh, there it is. It's in here. Okay. Hell yeah. Yeah, send that to me. We'll we'll pull it up. I need to hear him hear him like justify how his plagiarism isn't plagiarism. I think he did this before because it was like nine fucking years ago, dude. Oh, oh god. Okay. 
<laughs> but I want to see him tell to the yeah, idea. Yeah, I want to hear his views. Okay. That's concept. It could never work. My identity is nonetheless. This concept Even is with dog someone like shit. Star King, it, it's very hard to call it a South Park clone. Every Comedy Central animated show that's not South Park has tried to be South Park. Well, except for Moonbeam City. That tried to be Archer. I mean, that's not strictly true, but that's certainly what it feels like. I've already given my opinion on Drawn Together. Drawn Together was a show with an amazing concept, and it had more potential than almost any other show that I've ever seen. What they do with it, they tried to be South Park. Then there was Lil Bush, which tried to make fun of George W. Bush in 2007, when his presidency was almost over. And we already knew that he kind of had some problems. It had been seven years at that point. Then there's Brickleberry, which I don't even want to dignify. It's the regurgitation of regurgitation of regurgitation. Let me put it this way. As oh, long man. as Comedy Central keeps... Fucking, Gregory Allen. Yeah, he really hates, uh, yeah, Alan Gregory. A regurgitation. Yeah. Alan, yeah. A reg Alan, I thought it was Gregory Allen. Whatever. <laughs> Fucking yeah. like dog shit show. God, I hate the art style in that show, man. Everyone got so fucking ugly I and weird fucking... looking. I love that one piece of fan art that I sent in your uh, entity, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, like him and his enemies. <laughs> yeah, he has like the katana defending fucking Fluttershy and that old man with the beard. <laughs> Damn. Gurgitation. Let me put it this way. As long as Comedy Central keeps making animation, dude, that there will always so well be. Man, that, that was the first thing I thought of. I was like, never say, man, a hero would say he was. I'm so than disappointed. I could not find an AMV than Fox Mr. Enter in the animation with that department. In the and that brings us back here. I am I am so speechless. <laughs> like, I feel like I shouldn't need to explain to anyone what's wrong here. But considering oh, that this is apparently the hot new thing and it's all cartoons, maybe I do. So where do I begin? Well, again, the show is incredibly... Uh, like, it's taken them this long to just actually talk about the fucking yeah, cartoon. We're, we're about four minutes in. Why is it bad? Why is it bad? Why is it bad? Enter. Why is it bad? Is it the black hey, people? Like superficial? Yeah, that's what well, I'm just going to assume until he says something. talk about the animation. It's the worst. In existence. I've seen a lot of cartoons with it's poor animation, stylized. but this is worse He doesn't get that. Of... He doesn't get that it's supposed to be stylized. I mean, he probably not yeah. great, but it's got a style, a certain charm to it, if that makes any sense. You yeah, know? And, and conversely, for the kind of show it is, which is like a high school comedy, it doesn't have to yeah. be animated like Roger Rabbit or like The Thief and the Cobbler. Like... There are levels to this shit. It it's yeah. quite serviceable. You know, something it's... can look kind of ugly and yeah. still be charming in a way. You know, not not like Big Mouth, but uh, like Home my... Movies is a good example of that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. All the characters are real ugly in that shit. Yeah, right? or like Bob's Burgers is also hideous looking, but like yeah. it's it's deliberate, right? It's stylized. Yeah. yeah, he he just can't wrap his head around that. He's like, why aren't these people moving with like the fluidity? of uh fucking motor city or that tron cartoon or like you know he he has such weird expectations of why, the cartoons he talks as about good as the art for a growing around why would he talk about the animation in fucking family guy which occasionally has good animation like he 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 just makes up his mind like one minute into the review he goes like i hate this show yep. and i will never give it credit <laughs> Of that there are no exceptions this is legends next to new grand's animation put on the internet by a single person without professional equipment about a decade ago this is legends next to the first cartoon ever put to television this is legends next to the first animation ever made are you noticing a pattern here legends animation is worse than all of them you could put cardboard on a stick in front of a <laughs> I camera i would say it was you better than the better fucking stupid than little show. new grounds so it was I'm... absolutely better than that stupid new grounds animation and and what he like will not concede is that a show like Legends is trying to do something very different than these like deliberate shows of animation technique. Two of these yeah. animations are like demonstrations of what animation can do. And the third one was made by some stupid and the, little and teenager. And the third one's so. and the third one's a dumbass teenager, and it looks infinitely worse yeah. than than the show. You just don't like, like the oh. art style. You don't no, like the art style. That's he's it. mad because they were because they didn't pick up growing around again. <laughs> yeah, Who would? You have to be actively trying to make something look this bad. And I think that might actually be the case. Look at the outlines. They're not solid. Randomly missing some spots here and there. This is impossible That's to accidentally do on a computer. And if you're drawing with it. <laughs> that actually made me mad. Fuck. I know. I didn't know. 
It's like like I I don't know I don't know how you can genuinely not get this. It's like these are supposed to look like like sketches you would do in uh yeah sketches you would do in like a notebook. That's the point. Yes. It's a it's it's a style. God, I I wanna I I hope he reviewed John Callahan's quads. Are you familiar with John Callahan? I'm not. No. John Callahan, he's a quadriplegic animator and illustrator. Or he oh, was. So what, he he does. His miles? Yes, he does. Okay. Yeah, he's he, like, this looks like shit shit art style. Yeah, he, Why does he have no hands? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I want to hear his perspective because John Callahan made like two successful cartoons and had no fucking hands. <laughs> so, yeah. like, I I can't even imagine his opinions on that, and I'd love to I'd love to just hear him go in on a guy who couldn't even fucking move making a cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> no, I realize I'm just coming up to bat for this fucking show constantly, but like, yeah, it looks like kind of a just, shitty cartoon, but he's such a dick about it, man. Yeah, I, I just really he's like he like he thought like it was like look they have little seeds like all the like outlines where you can see the things like. They're, the supposed to, they're supposed to. They're supposed to miss it. You're not some genius who noticed something that they missed. This is like a it. this is a television show that has a team working on it. You don't think these guys have worked on other cartoons? You fucking idiot! Of course, he hasn't been to an art museum. He hasn't gone outside, despite what his pandemic documentary might make you think. <laughs> Give me, give me one second, Depressed. I'm sadly hold, letting you hold on to the wheel because <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. All right, so let's let's see what should we talk about, guys. Oh shit. Uh, this man of no. Ah, uh, this guy make this guy boils my coffee. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he does. He probably does hate Ed and Eddie. He's like, why are the line? Why does the line art move? I don't get it. He's a fucking dumbass. I genuinely do not like Enter. He's just stupid. Like, <laughs> oh god. What's your opinion on my door? What's my favorite conspiracy theory? Why are you white? There's a black Mr. Krabs in the SpongeBob and t- what the fuck are is this a joke? Is this some sort of like little animation, Alex? Like a little like online animation, or is this like an actual thing that, that the guys from SpongeBob made? All right, how many slurs did he say while I was gone? <laughs> what did you What did you say about Doctor Umar while I was gone, depressed? Well, Alex told me that there's a black Mr. Krabs in SpongeBob in Terran. Haran? Is that real? SpongeBob, me nigga. <laughs> I, you one of them funny white niggas. Hey, get, 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 get. The actual shark. Kenny Cosby, I don't know what 15 millimeters is. That's in These like, are the outline. Fucking foreigner. Yeah, find a, uh, use a real measurement, as yeah. I, I say. From we measure my country that uses metric system. <laughs> How few feet is that? Even the worst cartoons that I've ever seen in my life. The quality of the actual outlines have always been solid. In fact, if you're using, he's still, he's still on this. He's still on this. To be fair, we paused. We paused and complained about his complaint for a while. I know, but like he, there are so many cartoons that don't use solid outlines that I can think of off the top of my stupid animation nerd head. Someone was talking about like Ed and Eddie, like how he, yeah, yeah, like Ed and Eddie uses like. Purposely like wobbling lines, if I remember correctly. Yes, it does. Same with like Doctor Katz, uh, or yeah, Home Movies, Kevin Spencer, Daria, Beavis and Butthead. You know, like yeah. there are tons of cartoons that utilize that technique quite purposefully. And to make he it seem more. And he would probably be like, "Why does it move? It's supposed to be solid. It's not solid." You know, like I think Robot Jones also uses like broken lines. What a jackass, man! Using a computer's fill tool, which this show obviously is to color, would make your job even harder <laughs> to have outlines like up this. But this it's a show that airs open. right after South Park. Could it be that they're trying to imitate its style? Considering that the animation is the weakest part of South Park, and they can get away with it only because- The animation's actually extremely impressive with South Park. They do it in a you- fucking week. <laughs> like, 
This guy talks about cartoons for a living and he doesn't know anything about animation. No. He wants everything to look like My Little Pony. Somebody brought that up. Oh, God. And they're absolutely correct. He just wants everything to look like fucking My Little Pony with like, you know, like thick outlines or whatever. He, he would be so mad if someone said, hey, you know, My Little Pony is animated in Flash, right? He probably thinks Flash is amazing. You know, he's like, yeah. Flash is the best animation we have ever, you know? Like, well, like, the, the thick outline thing is is uh, pretty popularized by, like, Cartoon Network. I imagine he was into their cartoons. Because he seems probably. to shit on Nickelodeon a lot. Oh. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was, if he was like, more into, like, Powerpuff Girls and Dexters and all those shows growing up. Samurai Jack. Fucking enter will die on the front lines of the cartoon war. For cartoon <laughs> Network. Oh yeah. <laughs> because they make each episode six days. I remember the beaches of Normandy. That would be stupid. It actually reminds me more of Twelve Ounce Mouse though, because it has no cohesion or style of its own. There's a style that's distinctly South Park. This show doesn't have that. It's a bunch of disparaging elements mangled together in a blender. Even each individual character taken on its own, it's hard to figure out if they're. From this the guy same hasn't show. even talked about the fucking characters. Like sticking around. No, or the, the plot. Are simple stick figures, but you couldn't mistake them for being in another show. And yeah, it does seem like it has some quality issues. The characters don't stay still in between frames. However, there's a reason for it. Sticking Around tries to be the type of show that children would actually make. It leads to the best, worst, and most unique aspects of the show. But it's consistent in everything, from the stories to the characters to the tone. Every element builds into another. With as someone who... Sticking Around's a Canadian cartoon, but like... Okay. As, as someone... Is he, wait, is he Canuck? No, he is. Well? He is. Okay. Americans got that show, but like, as someone who grew up with that cartoon, one, uh, we all hated it, <laughs> and two, uh, his his points are so ridiculous that he could look at a stylized cartoon like that and give it tons of of kudos, and look at a stylized cartoon like this and disparage it for being stylized. Okay. Well, because sticking around didn't have as many black people. These ones scare him. Yeah, yeah. Sticking around had one black kid. Yeah, this show, this show has the, this show has one white kid. <laughs> this it's show, like, I feel, I feel misrepresented in this. I actually kind of like this style. I like the the fucking style of like just scribbling random shit in the classroom. It's it's yeah, it's it's it, it's grown on me. You know, yeah. at first I was like, it doesn't look that great, but looking at it, it's like, yeah, you know what? I can kind of see the charm in this. You know. Yeah, it's it's probably very it's... simple to animate too. Like yeah. that's another thing he doesn't grasp is like these guys probably used very simple shapes because they're easy to to animate. Yeah. With legends here, all of the elements just attack each other. He hasn't even fucking training. talked about the show even though. That pisses me off so much. Still the twelve principles <laughs> animation. Legends he talked about the characters, the plots, to follow only some of them some of the time. Like framing. Check the scene here. Wouldn't this scene look better if the face of the guy the kid was talking to was actually on the screen? And this is their idea of exaggeration. Just the pupils getting bigger. As bad as the animation is, the character design is not much better. Half of it is <laughs> ugly, <laughs> fat, <laughs> saggy breasts. I mean, most of them do look like something you could conceivably call a human, but some of them are racist. <laughs> That's my race you talking about, Enter. Oh God, he is. That's my race. This nigga racist. <laughs> he is, dude. Fuck. <laughs> We are we human as fuck, bro. We we been bleeding. We been going to the bathroom. We been drinking water. <laughs> we go to the bathroom. We human as fuck. Pussy All boy. Right, people. The school board is making us discuss the dangers of drugs with you. My God, it is far too late for her. Also, oh my God, it looks like a... We gotta go back to. Her. I think they're exaggerated because, like we were talking about these. Supposed to look like people you would draw in a fucking notebook. Yeah, you know? they're they're like dumb caricatures that yeah, like because, a teenager would draw. Yeah, especially of like the adults, like that fucking old lady with you know big saggy breasts. That's yeah. probably how some dumb teen views her. Goes like, oh man, it's that old fat bitch who teaches English. Yeah, yeah, like exactly. Yeah, it, it and it nails that style, but like yeah. Enter can't. And this this totally goes back to what I was saying with Turning Red. Enter like clearly did not have 
a decent high school experience. No, he got bullied. He got he got he definitely had his underwear brought up over his head in exactly one sit wonder. He, we was humans and shit. <laughs> we was human and she. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> My god, it is far too late for her. Also, all the lips are weirdly huge. It looks like Botox got into the water supply, but I know that's not the- Oh, my poor ignorant Mr. Enter thinking that that's Botox. Okay, it's because the first episode had a Botox joke. You've never seen a the black person. The characters from Prep the Rapper look up. less like paper than the characters we've got here. And all of this is a major problem because this show is trying- do, do you think he would see a Jay-Z video and just be like, Wow, Botox gone wrong. Wow. <laughs> uh dr niggas be wild and oh shit i said niggas <laughs> oh well i can say it it's uh, you and not rogue bro <laughs> once or me yeah. hey yo dr niggas be wild uh worst part of it i remember enter making a joke about how his job is yelling at spongebob for a living so even he is partially aware of how stupid this all is <laughs> A moment of lucidity from John Enter. Playing to be a shock show like Mr. Pickles or a dull party cartoon. But believe it or not, you cannot pull that off without really fluid animation. That is why Ren Seek's help was so effective at being disturbing. John K actually has talent. This show looks worse than Pelswick, which was drawn by a quadriplegic man. This oh, he just oh, he called it out! We just talked about him! We oh just talked God. about John Callahan. This yeah. show works, looks worse than Pelswick, which was drawn by a paraplegic man. Now, to be fair, the paraplegic man in question, uh, he did the character designs and an animation studio animated it. But beyond that, fucking John Callahan is, is a pretty talented guy as well. He's a very funny dude. And you gotta be pretty fucking talented to draw with your mouth. I just find it funny that we're seven minutes into this and he still hasn't talked about the fucking plot or the I characters. I don't know who the characters are yet. Like He's just talking about the fucking animation like we get it. You don't like it. Just go on to the next fucking give me, point. Give me sword. a fucking synopsis of, of why you don't like the characters and the dynamics. This is only one step up from showing us a black screen and just saying, Imagine defecation. Good. Now imagine two people having sex in it. So, the characters. First, there's Milk. The whole joke is that Finally he acts black, character. but he's not black. They expect this one joke to be funny for two seasons. This is Jamal, and he sounds like Herbert the pervert from Family Guy. We the future, you wouldn't know nothing about that. That is all I can hear when he talks. And finally, we have Grover, who is Grover. He has no personality. To be absolutely fair, the second episode isn't as bad as the first one, but that's because it tries a lot less hard to shock the audience. And thus, it begins to lose any identity the show is trying to build to begin with. But let's take a full, honest look at it and see if we can find any redeeming value whatsoever. The episode starts during a basketball game, and our main characters aren't even playing. Jamal is eating a corn dog and a potential product placement, and the other two are shooting the. He's like, this is fucking bad. So like, what do you have to say? Like. We've been sitting in silence because we're just shocked. By I'm, how shit I'm just is baffled. I yeah, I'm just baffled by that shit. Like, like, what's wrong with product placements in a fucking television show? And that's not a product placement; it's a parody. But what's easy. what's wrong with them? What's wrong with a show making fucking money? Enter. What's wrong with a show turning a profit and possibly offloading its budget? By having a sponsorship. What's wrong Real? with that? No, shows are only supposed to make me laugh and or giggle, not he, make money. He thinks I'll, he thinks the cup looking reminiscent to a Starbucks logo would be a product placement rather than the parody of what a Starbucks cup would look like. Yeah. That's uh, his, so that's his out, issue, Jeremy. He also immediately mentioned how, like, he, he seemed almost offended that the main characters that were following were on the sidelines instead of playing. That's the fucking point, Enter. It's supposed to show that they're on the team, but they're just, like, they're benched. a backup. Yeah, they're benched. Yeah, they're, they're losers. They're not, you know, we're rooting for the underdogs. It's because this jackass has never watched a basketball game. <laughs> like, he doesn't, he doesn't understand that these guys are the rejects, and that's the point. Yeah. He gets scared of all the people on the court in the basketball games. <laughs> 
these these three guys think that they're the all stars, like in that intro, but in fact they are the bench warmers. Yeah, it, joke, it joke, it joke. You know, like fucking. I, this ain't even autism anymore. I don't even know what this is anymore. Okay, you can't scapegoat autism this much and say you don't understand fucking anything. Christ, and just fucking. Dumb. Like, like, shout out my autistic homies. I know you aren't that stupid. This man Wait. is just dumb. The breeze. We learned that they had their first high school game coming up. At least we finally got our first high school game coming up. Our first step to being legend. You might want to rework that plan just a little bit. Just saying. All the BG spinning jockers when they see us rocking our jerseys, my nick. He's not black, but he thinks he's black. It's a joke. Get it? I, I hope of... you do because that is every single joke that they tell with him. It's like a less effort, so much less funny version of Uncle Ruckus with cancer. The coach starts yelling at him. What? I, I I don't get why he's so mad about that. Like that's yeah, that's the joke. It's not bad. He's, he's like yeah, he's a he's a uh, uh, like he's a a wigger, You know, he's just a he, white kid who wants to fit in with his black friends, but he can't. He's like Eminem, you know. Like I guess yeah. <laughs> that's the way you want to view it, you know. Yeah. I mean, fuck. He even has the blonde hair like him, you know. Right. Right. It's like, my, you know, he's he's just trying to be logic in this cold hard world that we live in, but. The Uncle Ruckus thing is like an actual interesting subversion where he's the darkest character in the cast and he thinks that he is a white man. It is and, funny. And he's a horrifically racist white man who advocates for white supremacy. That's a very different gag. And Enter has never met someone from a city. He, he, he definitely grew up in like the uh, suburbs or the... Uh... I can't Entry. Even, yeah, I can't even believe be that Mr. Enter watched the Boondocks, frankly. Oh, I, I don't... He would complain about every goddamn he, episode he would, of the Boondocks. Absolutely. So it's funny that Riley, a child, is dealing drugs. Everyone, because in the media... Oh, I get it. Now it's funny that Riley that they think... Striker. I'm just saying, transgender. Ha, ha. It's hard to understand what anyone is saying. LGBT yes, this show, now. like the Boom Crew, <laughs> uses a lot of slang. It's weird. Whenever a show tries to appeal to a certain demographic, like this one does. <laughs> sir, <laughs> sir, is you, are you people. sure? Are you sure you want to go down this motherfucking road, Mister Enter? A certain demographic, sir. <laughs> so, the Boom Crew is, yeah, kind of a whack cartoon, but it was made by a black cartoonist about black people, right? The guy who made The Proud Family did the Boom Crew. Oh, did he? Show. Okay, so yeah. it's made by black, even if he's kind of stupid. Uh, it's it's a very well-meaning effort that he did here, where it was like, yeah, of course, like, it's corny that these kids are using slang. Yeah. But, but it's also very forward-thinking that he was like, yo, I want to make a cartoon that young people can, like, actually see themselves in, yeah. right? Like, that's commendable. But no, Enter's gonna sit there and he's gonna throw his bottle at the screen and get mad. Yeah, but Enter's, like, the, the thing that fucks me up, and it's a shame Suki's probably at work right now, is that Enter is not black, and he doesn't understand that this stuff is actually important to black people. Oh, Now, okay. I'm not, I'm not uh, like, I'm not talking about, like, forced diversity but it is very interesting and exciting to see our experiences on television right that's different than making spider-man black or something i thought you guys were happy with your best friend role is that too you guys too good for that yeah yeah we're too good for, <laughs> for the black best the, friend role. the character who the character who occasionally says damn <laughs> I don't know about that, my G. My G. <laughs> Damn. So it's funny that Tom is going to be insulted in prison. Yeah, he would He would fucking hate that episode, which is ironically one of the funniest episodes that they have in that show. <laughs> you know, the booty warrior would come for Mr. Enter. Is I like you and I want you. Does. They seem to rely on some pretty bad stereotypes. While they comb their hair in the locker room, we can see that every single bit of moon in the show only has two frames of animation. A block of lead is more fluid than this show. I'm gonna start calling you Montank.
What the fuck does he want, though? Seriously, does he want... He just wants them all he... to have the exact same animation. He doesn't like stylized animation. He hates South Park, which has a very, you know... It has a simplistic style. It's yeah. charming. It's appealing to look at. You know? Yeah, and, and South Park over time like incorporated like 3D animation, and mm -hmm. the animation's quite good in South Park for like replicating that style they used to have. He, but like, like he if every time he talks about oh, it's only two frames of movement. What you want, fucking Fantasia? Do you want this this show about black kids in high school to look like the end of Evangelion? What do you <laughs> want, man? What want, do you want? Not, like that's not realistic. I want all these characters. I want all of the animated atrocity characters clapping around Mister Enter at the end of Evangelion. Congratulations! Yeah, <laughs> fucking Alan Gregory's family. Like congratulations, congratulations. <laughs> You ain't Has Mr. Enter ever said the gamer word? Yeah, I have Possibly. no idea what anyone is saying. Not, do like... I have to do the slang thing again? I mean, he said a certain demographic, so I don't doubt that he's he's invoked the yeah. N-word. Yeah, I refuse to believe he hasn't said the N-word at least once. In a, in a moment of anger, he's probably spouted a few N's. Uh, okay, good. Part of the reason that I'm having trouble understanding this is that everyone besides the main characters who speak in unintelligible slang shouts, like... A lot. Like, a lot, a lot. Like, a lot. Yes, I'm not one to talk. If I can't wear my jersey to school, I'm gonna go white boy and shoot this bitch up. I don't even see what they're trying to do with him. It's because you're the white boy, Enter. It's because you're the joke. You, <laughs> people like it. you are the joke. <laughs> Enter has zero self-awareness, dude. I don't see what they're trying to do. Let me put on my trench coat and try and understand the sequence. Yeah, I, it's not I bet you fucking enter war of Fedora stupid. in high school. Anyway, Grover has eyes for the popular girl, who is the girlfriend of the jerk jock. I didn't know this show came out in the 90s. I mean, that's the last time this story was interesting, right? Speaking of unwanted relics of the 90s, in this episode, the students will be paired up to take care of a baby. The twist is that instead of an egg, they each get these robots. That may have sounded funny or unique or whatever, but let's talk about the show's identity setting and the cohesion of it. Look around the school. It's dirty. It looks awful. It's as low budget as the animation will allow it to look like. In fact, that may be what they're trying to go for with the animation. Please tell me how the school could afford enough robots what? for an what? entire... Like, why is he so fixated? He's so mad about, like, tiny little plot inconveniences. It's a joke, Enter. <laughs> And and like you look at you look at the the background and everything, you're like, okay, well this this looks like a classroom in a dingy high school. Yeah, I also want to point out that he someone pointed out that he called fucking like a bonics, which is probably what they're speaking in, unintelligible fucking <laughs> slang, dude. <laughs> is playing oh, with fucking man. fire right now, dude. Unintelligible jargon. Yeah. A certain demographic might appreciate this, but... Yeah, no. God. Yeah, you're right, God, Phil. Man. Enter's never been to an inner city school. I don't think Enter's ever been to a city. I don't think Enter's ever seen a black person. That's why he's so confused about the lips, you know? Yeah, he's, he straight up does not understand anything about black people. What, uh, like, whatsoever. This whole fucking episode has just revealed his utter incompetence around, like, blackness. <laughs> Does he... Which is crazy that he would bring up the boondocks, but I guess Chris Chan brought up the boondocks. He, so... he, Chris Chan just liked Uncle Ruckus, though, you know? Yeah, yeah, he, he, he related to him. Ironically, <laughs> it doesn't seem like Enter likes Uncle Ruckus. <laughs> so I wonder what Enter enjoys about the boondocks. That's my question. Well, he probably likes how much Huey complains. He views him, he's like, I am you, Huey. It, but he, he skips all the parts where people don't like Huey and Huey gets humbled constantly and and humiliated routinely and gets his ass beat. Like, the point is that Huey's a sanctimonious dick. And most people go like, yo, you're corny and annoying and stop it. Like, get away from me. Like, Huey's not a popular, well-liked person in that show. No, he's not. Like... <laughs> Like Riley probably is is a a better, well liked person than Huey. Huey doesn't fucking have friends, man. <laughs> Only as Riley because like, he's his brother. So yeah, and like Jasmine like occasionally pities him. 
Now that's about it. Class. Milk gets paid with the lazy reskin of Jamal. Jamal gets paired up with... When did Norbit come out? 2007? Okay. A joke that's been overdone, overplayed, borderline offensive, and unfunny for about a decade before that movie came out. And He's Cindy, never the popular seen girl, big gets paired up with Grover. No, that's he probably hasn't powder. even seen Norbit. Like, seriously, I, I don't know what the joke is supposed to be. Are those drugs? Is this just, just a random drug reference? It's kind of out of nowhere and has nothing to do... Wait, I gotta run that back so I can... Wait, what? So I can... Did we skip trans... That? I, yeah, I, he, he's talking about drugs. I gotta understand where he's coming from here. About a decade before that movie came out. And Cindy, the popular girl, gets paired up with Grover. What's with the powder? Like, seriously. The powder? Oh, God. This nigga. <laughs> um, this fucking, this fucking mayonnaise, white, fucking eggshell nigga. I swear to God. LeBron James would do that all the time. He would throw baby powder in the air. That was his signature. Okay. All I right. don't watch basketball, so I'm not. A, so thank you for explaining. That's fine. That's fine. You you don't have to. But you also don't get to fucking criticize like a notable cultural reference like this if you don't know fucking anything about one of the most popular basketball players in the history of the game of basketball. Like, we're not talking about nigga shit. We're talking about, like, the third most important guy who ever bounced the ball. Okay, so LeBron James, you said, right? Yeah, LeBron LeBron would throw baby powder in the air to, to assert his dominance. It was a very common thing he did. Okay, and so he's doing that now to assert his dominance, but enter... Correct. Didn't do any fucking research about basketball or why yes. he may have done this. Yes, okay. yes. Like... Like I don't I don't fault anyone who's not into hoops not knowing this. I don't. But if you're gonna make a fucking video <laughs> about a certain demographic, as Enter would say, you might want to do a <laughs> modicum of research on I don't know, like you might want to just Google baby powder in the air. Oh, uh, one of the greatest basketball players of all time did this? Okay, cool. Maybe I'll rewrite my fucking script. Jesus Christ. What okay. a fucking moron. And you what would a hear the fucking name... moron. And you would hear the name LeBron James. It's like, is that French? LeBron James? Why the fuck would... Like, uh, you know, he's talking about drugs. And, and this, is, this is what nerds think. It's like, if you threw that much cocaine up in the air, you might as well throw $10,000 away. You know how much cocaine costs? Uh, Tens of thousands yeah, of dollars. It's, a, it's the oh, rich people drug. It's the fucking stockbroker drug, you know? A, a fucking eight ball of coke costs like 500 bucks if it's cheap. That's why fucking coke heads split. Usually four people go in on an eight ball. Because it's not cheap. Cocaine is not cheap. <laughs> why would you throw pure money in the air? Answer like just ask yourself these fucking questions. I don't know. A brick of a brick of cocaine costs forty thousand dollars. <laughs> like cocaine is so expensive that they use cocaine to make a different drug to sell. That's the whole reason crack got popular. It was so exactly. much cheaper. So, but no, because you can stretch coke anything. into crack. He doesn't get fucking anything. I'm so sick of people bringing up drugs when they don't know anything about drugs. This is basic fucking knowledge. I'm not a cop. I'm not a drug addict. I'm just someone who's read a fucking book and watched season one of Narcos. What the hell is wrong with you, Enter? He's too busy watching Spongebob, dude. He, he had to get this one. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. This is the man who watches children's cartoons for a living. So why remark on cocaine? Fucking hell. I love how mad this made you do. If he just didn't mention this at all, you know, Ugh. you would have it's, been fine. This actually pissed you off. I could tell. Yeah, this so this made me this made me mad because he fucked up two things simultaneously. He didn't he didn't get an American cultural reference that is like, it's not like a hard reference to get. Like it's not obscure. It's it's an extremely well known thing this athlete did. And conversely, he also thinks that cocaine is so cheap that someone would do this. Yeah. 
He has no clue I, what drug prices are. He's like, $100 for, like, a kilo, right? This is a drug reference. I want to see so, weed. I want to see Mr. Enter try and, like, buy weed. Like, not even do it. Just buy it. Be like, can I get, like, three, please? You know? Like, hand them, like, a 20 or some shit like that. It would be interesting <laughs> to see. It would be interesting to see him interact with anyone, I guess. Yeah. God damn, man. And yeah, someone said, like, wow, Canadian prices are hard. She's like, one, yes, they are. Two, and, they, use, and, uh, they use fucking Monopoly money, so are you surprised? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, like, even still, like, a uh, oh, fucking brick of Coke is, is exceedingly it's expensive. expensive. It's, it is the rich, it's, it's the reason why you only see, like, Wall Street guys doing cocaine yeah. in movies. People don't buy fucking bricks of coke to do <laughs> they they turn it into other drugs and sell it usually the only Seriously, cocaine I, you're I finding in the, the fucking hood is them Are getting ready to drugs? sell it they, they're not just, buying it to you yeah. reference it's kind of out of nowhere <laughs> 50 dollars for a dime seems legit they don't even make it clear that it's a drug reference and randy gets paired <laughs> with oh that's oh, killing me i gotta on. move on I've already talked about how unfunny this brand of joke is a while back. It's not that the joke is offensive, it's just that it's so easy to make and so overdone. If you're watching the show, you, the audience, you have seen this joke before. Especially if you're watching Comedy Central. So immediately we see the new couples interact. For these two, who are fat, we get fat jokes. For these two, who are in an abusive relationship, we get abusive relationship jokes. And with Grover, he has to ace this project if he wants to steal someone else's girlfriend. Wait, that makes him sound like a terrible person. He's supposed to be the good guy protagonist we're supposed to root for, right? Oh, Andrew has never heard the term all is fair in love and war. No, and he has also never met a fucking black person who would absolutely slide on another nigga's girl if the opportunity arose. Uh, honestly, all of this seems like problems with, like, the uh, black community, if you will. You know, abusive relationships you know, overeating, et cetera, et cetera. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's, almost, it's almost like the show is written for a certain demographic. <laughs> that demographic is not fucking Enter. <laughs> right. It's not this meant kid. for nerdy He's white guys in their basement. The and no one treats him. That makes him sound like a bad person. He is a bad person. Yes, he is a bad person. Wait, is that a little, That's... like, is that guy supposed to be a little Huey reference? I just realized that. The guy in the bottom line. No, he's, he's supposed to be a Spike Lee reference. Okay. Spike is Spike Lee's a very pretentious black filmmaker who is kind of like the Huey of his time. Yeah, no, I've seen some Spike Lee. I, he made Old okay. Boys. He play, He made uh, Black Klansman. I've watched. Yeah, those. yeah, yeah. He he makes a lot of movies where black people are right. Them like blah blah blah. Remember Stewie Griffin? Legends of Chamberlain Heights. Remember Stewie Griffin? And then we see. Actually, I have no idea what the purpose of the scene is at all. It's not funny, it doesn't introduce any new characters, and it doesn't move the plot along. There are a lot- He thought- he thought that that kid was a Stewie Griffin reference and not a Spike Lee reference. Like, oh, like he- like, this man just does not fucking get it. He no, doesn't, he doesn't- he, the thing is, I don't- I don't get a lot of this because I'm a white guy as well, you know? <laughs> so a lot of this does go over my head as well. Yeah, like but you. like, but you're probably a lot more receptive if, like, I sat down and went, "No, that guy's a reference to this black filmmaker." Yeah, yeah, I, I thought who, it was like supposed to be a Huey yeah. reference because you know he had like the afro and like a black power shirt. But yeah. you know, Enter is just like mm, that's a baby, so it has to be a Stewie Griffin reference. But but Huey himself is a reference to a black activist named Huey Newton, right? Like, yeah, yeah, Black Panthers. Guy. That's yeah, exactly. Like that's all that's all levels, right? Yeah. So. But he sees small and pretentious equals Stewie Griffin is how his brain works. I think it's just small like and speaks. You know, doesn't even have to be pretentious. I think they lost the very slim chance that that kind of joke might have been funny by doing something remarkably similar to it in the first episode. Come on, Milk. We're in this together. I already been done told you, Shamal. That baby ain't mine. I can't tell if this show is trying to be funny and being bad at it or actively trying to make people mad and being bad at it. I'm sorry, but this is just so pathetic that I can't even get angry at it. Even with the worst possible shows, that's never happened before. Even the most offensive, putrid messes of animation, I've been able to muster more emotion for than this thing. What do I even say to that? It feels like critiquing a middle schooler's pen drawings. There's not even much- Ray finally got it! He finally got it!
it's it's like critiquing a middle schooler's pen drawings. Yes, yes it is. Yes it is. Yes, these are the pen scrawlings of a middle schooler. Or the high schooler in this case, but Yeah. Unreal, man. Guy has it, zero. It took him this wins. long to even fucking come well, to that conclusion. Twelve minutes in and he finally realized what it's supposed to be, but he doesn't really get it. He just happened to say it. Christ so Ayo, Sean. Much to talk about in the quantity department. They just keep going on with the same jokes over and over again. If it's funny the first time, it'll be funny the 50th time. No, Phil, no, he's not saying the show just isn't made for me. He's saying that the show is bad because it's not made for him. There's a difference in there. That's why you gotta enroll these little bastards in Obamacare. Yes, Obamacare. That's actually kind of a funny joke. This show doesn't even seem that bad. No. Like, it's... Like it's stupid and childish, but but that's what the place. cartoons are. That's what they yeah. are at the end, except yeah. for Bojack Horseman, which is pretentious from what I've been told. Well, yeah, you, you wouldn't get it unless you're clinically depressed and a pedophile. Care is a thing, and they're robots, so this is not how political commentary even functions. It it's was like, a pun, and senator, you robot fucking senator. I made a joke. So blah blah insurance, blah blah vaccinations, blah blah robots can really get sick. I think you can see where this is going next. Their baby gets measles in the very next scene. So Grover needs to find someone to watch the baby while he's at the game. We have another scene that doesn't move the plot along, doesn't introduce any new characters, and isn't funny. Hey, is that kid from College Humor? Nah, even they're too good to be associated with this train wreck. Anyway, these kids are selling drugs. So Grover asks his washout big brother to watch his robot baby. Let me get your social. What? Sometimes my trail has to become someone other than my trail. He does drugs. Shit, the show does not seem that bad. No. Hey, some, okay. Anytime he's actually played out a joke, it's pretty funny. Yeah, I, I thought the Obamacare was funny. It was just a little stupid pun, but then he was like, oh, I don't... Fucking Enter is so dumb. Actually Yo, this, brain dead. This nigga tried to steal his, like, his kid brother's socials hysterically. Yeah. And he's just kind of is like, he saying it's I... another... Did he say it was another drug reference that he's not getting? What? Sometimes my trail has to become someone other than my trail. He does drugs and he's a criminal. We've already established this. We already know that this is a bad idea on every level. Damn, what a fucking nerd. Officer! Officer! This man was smoking a rolled cigarette! Andrew absolutely would. Andrew would get, like, offered... I guarantee you, Andrew's got offered, like, weed outside of, like, a fucking... GameStop one time, they just yeah. immediately went to the police. Like, like they're skip. They offered me drugs, officer. Please arrest them. Yeah, I fucking enter. Went to a convention hotel party with a bunch of other cartoon people and fucking rebel taxi. Went, hey, do you want to hit this mysterious minster? Enter. Excuse me, is that a reefer cigarette pan pizza? And that that penis just smoked it. That penis smoked it. <laughs> oh yeah. Let me hit that shit right quick, my nigga. Onward to the basketball game. Uh, I have a quick confession to make. I don't really have any interest in basketball, so I have yeah, no, no idea shit we could tell about. <laughs> if you are interested in basketball, you might be a little bit more interested in the show than I am. However, that's not really defense of the show. I don't really know how to play tennis or know any famous tennis players or any of the terminology except maybe love. And yet, I enjoyed the Prince of Tennis. If the show all right, like, I mean, tennis is also the whitest fucking sport you could have chosen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, tennis, tennis is profoundly Caucasian, but even like, still, like, you only like, how could, been, if, if he how could you how, how could you watch the Prince of Tennis, which is a long-running sports anime, and not pick up the terminology? They talk about tennis all the time. Are you just not paying attention to this fucking show? They play tennis every episode. You would pick something up by osmosis, at least. Right, right. That's half the reason the sports anime is basically making sports palatable to people who don't play sports, more often than not. <laughs> Arya said, oh no, he is a pot fan. <laughs> I don't know why that means. He is a pot fan. You see, someone who does he just he's a pot I mean, I mean, being a Prince of Tennis fan is not good. And he should be ashamed that he 
likes this show. The show is good. It will at least allow me to tolerate the basketball subject matter or a subject matter that I don't like. If the show is really good, it will make me actually like You're basketball. Fucking dork, this show man. makes me never want to hear or see anything about basketball ever again. And we see that the robot baby thing has been given an inexorable amount of drugs. Is this thing a robot because people might find this a... He's using the robot as a bomb. He used the robot as a bomb. That's the joke. That's the joke. He's not a hard one, Enter. You you got this one, buddy. Come on. He's not even he's not even reviewing the whole show. He's he's reviewing one episode. <laughs> he's reviewing one episode and is specifically pointing out every drug or what he thinks is a drug reference. Is that man smoking marijuana out of the robot's head? Absurdly disturbing if they did to a physical infant. Or yeah. is it just because Enter, an actual if you infant fucking... in this art style would give people would it be disturbing if they did it to an actual if it yeah. Yes, Enter, yes it, it would. would. But it's yes, a robot, it so I don't give a shit. <laughs> Enter you're fucking stupid. This character of the layabout stepdad or what or whoever he is, is such a piece of shit that yes, he would use a robot infant as a bomb. You gotta yo, this nigga needs a fucking prima guy walkthrough for jokes. This guy straight up needs to go on to joke FAQs <laughs> and read a walkthrough for a joke. Oh, this joke nigga is him. stupid. He gets nothing. He doesn't understand anything. How do you... This is such a surface level joke, man. He is God, like man. annoying. That is a selfish asshole doesn't have a bomb. Uses robot as a bomb. That's the joke. Yeah, uses uses uh what is it? Son's robot as you know son's school project as a bomb. Yeah. But no, Enter needs, <laughs> like you said, he needs a fucking walkthrough for this. Is, is this some sort of drug reference? People nightmares for the rest of their life. It's just shock, but it doesn't have the style or creativity or budget to actually shock. Believe it or not, it actually takes effort to even be shocking. You know, the shows that were the most shocking, Ren Seeks Help and The Brothers Grunt, you realize that they actually have very talented people behind them. So Grover and his brother go to a tech shop, but who really cares? I don't want these people to succeed. They're lazy idiots. It looks like the. Oh no! That's, that's okay. the whitest, that is. might be that might be the whitest thing he said this whole review. That I was... don't want these people to succeed. They're lazy idiots. That, that, that was some white hatred coming out right there. Dude. Hey yo, hey yo, uh, officer. These people were were acting up before I got here. <laughs> Mr. Enter is the kind of person to like stand with like his hands on his hips watching a cop apprehend someone yeah. and going, yeah, he was acting suspicious no. earlier, actually. Enter would see a black guy in his neighborhood and immediately call the police saying that there's a suspicious individual on his street, <laughs> you know? And then he would just peer through his fucking windows until the cops arrived and shot the kid or some shit. <laughs> Hey, yo, did that man who looks like the honeycomb monster call the cops on me? Baby has power down syndrome. My baby has power down syndrome? Uh, 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 no gesture, funny. gesture. So we are not going to have to enter the fucking... Stupid baby. <laughs> that would be <laughs> awful, dude. <laughs> and our protagonist is delusional. The three of them... So, ha ha, Guts was molested... <laughs> Break into the teacher's computer this in order to reset all the robot babies. Be... I don't see how that would work. So is that supposed to be funny? God's torture damage port. And not That's what this damage. is. If you're gonna do a robot thing, you should at least get the basics correct. Somehow this ends up unvaccinating all of the babies. It's dying. Oh, Shamal. Every woman loses a baby or two in her lifetime. If I made a fire out of all the cardboard used in the show, how long do you think it would last? At some kind of party, the show poses the question of how big an action scene can something this badly animated come up with? The answer is... It can't. One of the babies gets crushed. But because everyone's baby died, the teacher decided <laughs> Mr. to- Mr. Enter would walk past the black guy and put his hands in Also, the dead baby jokes are the laziest no, possible way that a show can try that. to do dark humor. Oh, and this must say, literally- no. Hold like, on to his wallet. Of literally, oh, be the laziest way possible to make any kind of show possible, not just animation. I can't think of a single element that was done lazier anywhere else. It looks like utter garbage next to even Patty the Pelican. And this was made by an entire team. That was made he by- He brought Patty the Pelican. 
Park it again. It's just a cheap cash grab on God South damn. Park. And I'm having a hard time even caring about it on that level. You could say that I'm out of fucks to give. I wouldn't go out of my way to get this show canceled. I mean, the last time that I... Out of your way to get it canceled? What the fuck are you talking what about? What fucking power do you have? <laughs> I am, I'm going to take... I'm going to make and take the effort to ruin the lives of the people who worked on this if show. If this isn't Disney's worst... All right, so there's a bunch of little shorts. We, I guess, we only need to watch. Well, that yeah, we one. just, we just need to watch the one he plagiarized. That's it. Go back, go back, go back. That's it. It's called Imperfect Duplicates. I think it's in the same thing. All right. Perfect duplicates of Dodger Dare, which is probably we the one that I hate most. We to skip a little bit past this because it Sad didn't get because marked. because it has not the majority of the episode. Then Dodgers Dare. I think that's it. Instead of what Kids Next Door would do, okay. they do nothing. The kids yeah. act exactly like adults, and the adults act exactly like kids. I'll show you what I mean. The mom gets it with a toy, and the son, Duke, was playing with it. And then the mom threatens to give them a timeout. Now, if the show gave kids merely the role of adults, and vice versa, that would be interesting. Oh, God, no, it wouldn't enter. Because <laughs> they're just the same. It's just now... Wait, uh, wow, that, like, this is like the proto-growing-around moment. If the, if the children were children, but with the autonomy of adults... That would be interesting. No, it wouldn't enter. Now you're no, just the juxt- slave to your son, <laughs> you know? The juxtaposition of seeing, like, two 40-year-olds act like children and two 10-year-olds act like adults is, uh... It, that is interesting. That's that's funny. Could be mildly interesting for a little bit. Not, like, a whole-ass show, but for this... Well, yeah, really this is short. a short, though. It's, yeah. like, a, a three- or four-minute thing, yeah. And possibly even funny. Instead, if I didn't know any better, I'd say that this is an absurdly cliché story with an animation error that they decided to roll with. The parents have an invitation to go to a party. Instead of making, like, a birthday party or something, they make it an adult party. So the kids... Oh god, this is going to get confusing. Why is he so obsessed with the childhood thing, man? Like, there's... There's something deeper at play. (laughs) I I don't trust Mr. Enter. Mm-hmm. Like, exactly. I think there's something a lot creepier happening here. Asked to be left home alone, when Duke starts sucking his thumb. Am I supposed to find this funny, cute, or creepy? I don't really know. It's just confusing. Especially when you start thinking of the logistics of this world. Trust me, there are some questions you don't want to ask about this show. Mommy, where do babies come from? The parents give them some sample questions that are once again played completely realistically. I know what everyone's thinking. I got my convertible. They say I'm having a midlife crisis. But you know what? I don't care what anyone thinks. I like having the top down wind on my face and the power in the palm of my hands. Oh my god, how could they not make this work? Yep, it's another example of an episode that has a fantastic idea. And thinking that it excuses it from Only telling an Edgar interesting story. Only Edgar would think this is a fantastic and- idea. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. It's, again, it's, it's such a, like, a, a tiny gag, right? Of just, like, see, it's funny... Because it's a 10-year-old saying something that a 40-year-old would say. Exactly. The only way this could have worked is more of like a kids next door sort of deal, you know? Yeah. But Andrew didn't lean into that. He just made adult slaves and, you know, annoying I, like, children. I, yeah, it's like, again, I like the gag for like two minutes of like, oh, well, that's kind of novel that this... This 40-year-old man is going like, oh, but I want my bear, you know? Like, ha, ha, ha. Like, yeah, it's uh, a... An adult man wouldn't say that. That's that's about how deep as, as this concept gets. No, and but... He, saw, he sounds so incensed about it, though. He's just like, they could have made this great. They could have been the next big thing. Enter, because Enter wants to live in this fucking world. I think we already determined. He yeah. just wants to fucking do nothing but play video games and go to school all day. <laughs> yeah, he, he really does seem to have, like, a fixation with childhood of just going, like, what if kids could be kids and eat ice cream all day? Well, that that would probably end very badly. And, and it's the worst offender. The concept is great. In fact, I really think that someone should rule with this again. Just keep the kids uh, as kids yeah. and adults as adults. Just flip their roles. That would make an awesome cartoon. Anyway, the parents think that their kids are doing dangerous <laughs> awesome things and go home to check up on them without telling each other in separate means of transportation. Good. A squirrel bangs on a trash can and the kids, adults, think that it's a burglar. This means that we get some Home Alone crap. The father comes home and gets attacked by the traps and ends up in a gorilla suit. You know that this might have been funny if they weren't actually pelting down on a child? 
The kids call the police, and the mother punches the father. By the way, if she was in the car, how did he get to the house first? Either way, they both get arrested for being concerned about their kids. Adults. And that was all of Shorty McShort Shorts. As a whole, it was it a waste. It good, but neither yeah. is yours. They're both shit just in... Yeah, but, but the difference is that they knew that it would... Like, that concept lasted three minutes or yeah, whatever. That was like, a... It was a short, right. like we said, you know? Like, you get you get five minutes of kind of okay comedy out of it versus I want to make an entire show about this situation. Dedicated. He's been doing this for, like, listen, he learned about this nine years ago, and how long has he been doing this? Trying to do the oh. going around? Had to yeah. be four or five years, right? Yeah, it's about five years that he's been trying to Half make that happen. a fucking happen. decade. Goddamn. So we're we're gonna queue up some Phoebe and her unicorn. This is the one where he goes in on mental health. Oh god. I don't usually do animation news, but something recently has caught my eye. Over the course of 2022, Man. I discovered a webcomic by Data Simpson <laughs> called Phoebe and Her Unicorn. It's about a nine-year-old girl who accidentally hits a unicorn with a rock in the forest. However, this turns out to be a good thing. The unicorn was so caught up in her own reflection like that she may have been staring at herself for days or even longer. The unicorn introduces herself as Marigold and grants Phoebe one wish as a reward. And Phoebe wishes that the unicorn could be her friend forever. From there, there's a lot of one-off gags, some continuous misadventures, and so on. The comic strip has such a strange sense of humor, and if it's something that gels with you, it can really gel with you. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. Fun fact, before my internet break back in June, I actually bought the first four volumes of it physically. So, why do I bring this up? Well, in June 2020, Phoebe and Your Unicorn was picked up by Nickelodeon to be made into a cartoon. I was actually interested in this would-be show. However, as we learned in the past week, as of the writing of this video, Phoebe and Her Unicorn would be the Nicktoon that wasn't. Okay. Dana Simpson revealed on her Facebook that the series was cancelled. This was apparently the second time that that had happened. In 2017, Dana tried with Amazon, which was also shelved as they were cutting back on children's programming at the time. However, the Nickelodeon shelving happened for a much more Definitely contentious- Definitely his fucking, uh, editing, though. I could say that much, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the production the production values definitely shot so up. So congrats in that, Enter. You didn't fuck up everything, you know? I mean, I'm sure you like, just hired someone else to edit, which makes sense, but... That's... I mean, yeah, but that's, like, the expectation, right? It's, like, he should have been making content at this level probably five years earlier. For having 250,000 subs, yeah, this should be about the level you're at, maybe a little bit higher this reason. Yeah. According to Dana, the people at Nick who picked up the show were replaced by new ones. New ones who thought that the show didn't cater enough to boys. When the internet picked up on that, there was quite a bit of outrage. Outrage that is well deserved. It's an awful reason to cancel a show. But even going beyond that, it has some deeper implications that I don't think a lot of people have seen yet. It's the newest in a long line of stories that make me worried about the direction that Hollywood is going. Let's start by talking about a the trans lady who wrote the dog comic. Oh, this is gonna be bad, huh? Oh no! Wait, what? This is the same lady that wrote the dog comic about like fucking the dog or something crazy like that. <laughs> oh, I hope. Is it? Oh, 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 God! Different network. <laughs> One that at first seems like an you exception know. to all of this. The Disney Channel. Disney Channel has proven again and again that female protagonists or female-focused shows can and do have an audience. The Ghost and Molly McGee, Owl House, Amphibia, Star vs. the Forces of Evil, Moon Girl, and many others all second. star a female lead. In fact, Are there any fucking shows with, like, boy leads out right now? I just thought done, so that's I'm... not... Oh, like... Holy shit. That's a... So, that's a... so they might have a point being, like, we don't have enough shows that fucking focus to boys, you know? What do they have? Spongebob yeah. reruns? Uh, Gumball, I'd say. Is I thought like Gumball the... ended. No, Gumball's still on, yeah. I think Gumball has one more season, though. Uh, yeah. That was, they, don't, they, don't, they used to have, like, a bunch. They used to have, like, a, that one Star Wars The Clone Wars on a Cartoon Network, you know? Yeah, that's, that is fair that they have, like, they have a myriad of girl shows, shows right now. But, about girls of ambiguous racial descent. <laughs> yeah. But they have fucking nothing for the guys. Goddamn. No. Fuck Phobia and her unicorn. I'll take it out back and shoot in the head. Where are my boy cartoons? Facts. Yeah, we need we need more shows about robots, laser weapons. Yeah. Turning into a cyborg. I don't know. Something. I'm not a cartoonist. <laughs> I, don't, I don't watch 
but I figured I would at least hear something about it. But no, you're right. All I said amphibia and fucking whatever else, you know. Uh, at least amphibia's got like some fighting in it. Like but yeah, I, I agree. Oh, you're right. Like, they do so- have that one male character. What was his name? David? David <laughs> or something. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. That's 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 pretty rough. But yeah, the more I think about it, you're, I I can't lie that Enter is totally bang on. It's like they're well, no, Enter isn't. The studios are. Yeah, yeah. Enter didn't make that point. They got no fucking. They're they're like, like they're like we haven't sold a toy in five years. Yeah. Cartoons are merely a vehicle for selling toys. That's pretty much it. Well, they or they're cheap enough to get people to watch like multiple shows. Like I, I've never got that about cartoon reviewers that like they're not willing to have that perspective where they realize, oh, this is a business, and cartoons are made specifically to have an appeal to a demographic, yeah. right? Like, yeah, amphibia. Yeah, you, you're right. Amphibia has. Uh... It's friggin' Anne, and Anne is just a traditional Anne. woman, judging by what I've read in that one fan fiction. Wait, yeah, I was about to say, what about Daryl Loyalitat? Yeah, Daryl, that a... was it. Daryl Loyalitat, that was it. Yeah, yeah Daryl's Darryl's, <laughs> Darryl's notable protagonist in Amphibia. God damn. Okay. Fucking... Admiral DTA. Man. A lot of people <laughs> on the internet are using the Disney Channel and Disney's cartoons as an argument against this. Something that I need to state right off the bat is that for this part of the video, I'm going to be speaking from a point of view that I do not agree with. What I'm about to say I find insanely stupid, but it's important to understand what network executives are using to dictate their decisions. And it comes down to one simple word, branding. Beyond being separate networks, Nickelodeon and the Disney Channel have entirely different brands. They are both a fusion of live action shows and animation aimed at kids, but I think that anyone who watches them will understand that there's a tonal difference between the two. To the general public, the Disney Channel has had this reputation of being the girls' channel. In the 2000s, they were known for shows like Hannah Montana, That's a Raven, Lizzie McGuire, Kim Possible. I'm not saying that these shows shouldn't, weren't, or couldn't be enjoyed by boys, but their target audience was undeniable. Even in more gender-neutral Disney shows like The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody or The Wizards of Waverly Place, Disney pushed the female stars, framing them at the center of the advertising and making them double as pop singers. Shows that didn't do that like Phil of the Future or Cory in the House never gained the same attention with their target audience. When you combine all of this with the most profitable arm of the Disney brand, the Princess Line, Disney's target audience becomes pretty obvious. Nickelodeon has a different brand. Nickelodeon is rebellious, weird, and even gross. It pushed shows like Rugrats, Ren and Stimpy, Rocko's Modern Life, even Spongebob. For the longest time- this off, but this shit is all like over a decade old, 15 years old, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. This yeah, isn't their like, image anymore. Like, what's their modern shows? The uh, Loud House? Loud House, Casa Grandes, which is a spinoff of The Loud House. Mm. And, uh, shit, that's actually it. And I guess still Spongebob. but And Spongebob, yeah. So that's it. That's Nick, you know? Yeah, Nickelodeon's image for so long was just, like, Spongebob, Fairly Odd Parents, Loud House. No, but he's fucking bringing up like these old ass like Rugrats, dude. Yeah, that has been on since I was the fucking kid, you know. Yeah, no. Nah, Ren, and, Ren and Stimpy was their first show. Yeah, like it was their first Nick tune. Like it, it's it's so deliberate that he's like avoiding actually talking about the modern landscape of Nickelodeon. Yeah, but... even their logo was a splat of orange goo. All that stuff was and is marketed to boys. So that's who Nickelodeon was and is aiming for. I nah, you, okay, this guy can't possibly tell me that As Told by Ginger and the Wild Thornberries was for boys. Wild Thornberries had that one cool guy, though, didn't he? Didn't they? The Nigel Thornberry? I liked him. Well, yeah, yeah, he carried that goddamn show. <laughs> that, that was the only... That, you know, not, you're right, that's the only fucking thing I remember show was that guy it's like smashing yeah yeah the rest of his bullshit family sucked that man that man worked too goddamn hard to he make did. that show to interesting. make that fucking show <laughs> yeah 
And yeah, as told by Ginger, it's just a show about ugly women. So nah. Explain all this because I think understanding the idea of branding shows that Disney Channel's female leads are less of a reflection of the state of media than they seem. So let's talk about the other side of the coin. How many Nicktoons specifically have had female protagonists? I'm talking about actual on-the-network Nicktoons, by the way. We're not talking about preschool shows, acquired programming, or stuff made premium for the Nicktoons network. In chronological order, we have The Wild Thornberries in 1998, As Told by Ginger in 2000, My Life as a Teenage Robot in 2003, Mighty B in 2008, Winx Club in 2011, The Legend of Korra in 2012, The Casa Grandes in 2019, It's Pony also in 2019, and Monster High in 2022. That's 9 out of the 54. God damn. Shit, man. It's, and two of those... Two of those are just yeah. fucking spin-offs, you know? <laughs> yeah, and, and Winx Club wasn't made for Nickelodeon. It was licensed by Nickelodeon. Yeah. Like, I gotta, you know, part of me is like, well, I gotta give it to this guy for doing the research, but also, Jesus, can you imagine having to do this much research to make a fucking Here's the video thing. about a children's we, cartoon? We look, you gotta remember, dude, we looked at it, like, he had watched, like, almost all the Nickelodeon shit, like, that one thing, do you remember? Yeah, so he's the, like watched yeah, yeah. all these series. Like, oh he's watched God. all of them. He's watched all of them. It's 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 upsetting that he's watched like two and a half decades worth of cartoons. For total, and two of them, Damn. Cora and the Casa Grandes, were spinoffs to a show oh, with a male lead, shit, and many of the other ones were treated abysmally. My life. my life as a Teenage Robot is the most infamous in that regard, but Cora definitely fits the bill too. I haven't heard anything about It's Pony since its pilot was aired. Thornberries and Ginger aren't as pushed by the network today anywhere near as much as shows like Rocco, Invader Zim, or even Hey Arnold. Once again, it's all because of branding. When I think of the traditional the Nickelodeon brand, the only one of these shows that too. really- This music is like driving me insane. <laughs> It sounds like fucking walking with wet flip-flops, dude. What is this? <laughs> Really fits that bill is Mighty B. The Loud House is also a show I want to bring up because the cast is heavily female dominated. That's basically the premise of the show. However, the protagonist is a boy who gets a marketable tomboy girlfriend, and the series delves into the kind of gross out humor that you'd find in a lot of other Nicktoons, especially from the 90s. Once again, I want to reiterate, I'm not saying that any of this is right. I'm saying the opposite. The a lot of these shows I really do like. I have a lot of respect for As Told by Ginger, and My Life as a Teenage Robot is one of my favorite cartoons of all time. But Nickelodeon, as a corporation, thinks that shows like Fanboy and Chum Chum, Rugrats, or Breadwinners belong more in the network. I have a feeling that if Phoebe and her unicorn did get on Nickelodeon, it would either be buried like its pony, which it shares more than a passing resemblance to, or treated terribly like the original Avatar or Danny Phantom, which both, by the way, also went against the company's brand. Whether something goes with or against a company's brand is a neutral statement. It is no indication of whether a show like is good or bad. Here. The buzz is, is on Maggie just, yeah. is perfectly in line like, with the Disney brand. Absolutely. Because, no, like, absolutely. like, Loud House, like, it has a male character sure in the center, but, like, he has, like, what, like, 12 sisters or some shit? Like, that's mostly female cast, you know? Or, uh, fucking Avatar, The Last Airbender, like, the OG one. Like, they had, like, the main four characters, and, like, two of them were girls, right? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it's a lot more gender neutral. Not so much, like, boys show, I wouldn't say, you know? Like, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Yeah, I'd say that's a boys show, but not fucking some of this other shit. It's just... I, I just... I don't know. <laughs> it's well, well, no, like, not overtly, right? Like, yeah. not, not to the point where, like, okay, this is a boys cartoon, here are the characters, here's what they do. Yeah, like, it's it's not so deliberately marketed the way that, like, Transformers or G.I. Joe or yeah. like, something that you're like, oh, okay, this is like... Uh, yeah, you look at G.I. Uh, Joe... Boys you're like, are the sole demographic yeah. of this cartoon. Yeah, G.I. Joe, you know, it's like, oh, man, I want to buy armor. I want to yeah. die in Iraq, you know? <laughs> that was his point, and it worked, you know? <laughs> Only eight more years before I can... Gravity this. Falls Only was not. And you can usually tell how on-brand a show is by how many restrictions its creators get. This isn't an exclusive... Can I just mention that Alex Hirsch, the creator of Gravity Falls, is such a fucking dink yeah, yeah. for talking... 
We just talk shit about Disney all the time, and it's like, who would want to work with this man who has just, like, talked about how much he hates the people who gave him money? Didn't he, <laughs> didn't he like, bring porn, like, and just go jack off in his office? Like, I heard that was, like, a story that uh, he would just do all the time. There are, there are allegations that he shit in his office. <laughs> yeah, I've heard Alex and Hirsch is a big fucking loser, unsurprisingly. I, I think I, I may have mentioned that I met him once, and he was he was an interesting guy. Oh, shit. How'd that go? Uh, he's, he's kind of a weird guy. Like, I yeah, I met him at a bar at a convention. And, That's uh, surprising. Well, uh, I, th I think, yeah, I don't know. He's an animator. He's probably just I getting feel drunk. Like, yeah, I feel like any sort of animator is always kind of weird. Anyone who's like... A lot of people that are really artsy, I've noticed, are kind of... Uh, kind of weird in general yeah yeah definitely and like there there are a lot of fairly substantiated stories of justin roiland taking alex hirsch to strip clubs which is surprised. uh it was... very funny to me they're both dorks i'm not surprised <laughs> yeah yeah I, I think justin roiland was trying to get alex hirsch in on the uh the degeneracy train that he was a part of but yeah What's the it problem to have, uh, what was his name? Dan Harmon. Did you ever see his thing where he fucked a baby? Oh yeah, yeah. That was fun. I tried to send that to Rogue once, but he wouldn't watch it on stream. I wonder why. He wouldn't watch. He wouldn't watch Dan Harmon fuck the baby doll. No, he wouldn't. I sent it to him. <laughs> they did not bite. You know, you know that fat prick Dan Harmon was like, "Oh, it's comedy. Comedy is Subjective. comedy shouldn't have boundaries." Mm. It's like, no, you're you're a, you're a creep. You're yeah. a complete creep. He made he ma he matched the baby crying sounds to his humping. Yeah, it's like, it's fucking bad, dude. It's it's pretty disgusting. He's he's a Fuck complete Dan asshole. Harmon. I hope he dies unironically. Accident. <laughs> I. This this is why you come on this show, man. We we you and I we got a lot of similar opinions, my friend. <laughs> Dan Harmon's a piece of shit. Yeah, Dan I Harmon even, is a creep re fan. <laughs> I don't even fucking care how good community is. Like like that guy's a either. All networks, streaming services included, have brand identities. All creative companies, really. When Nintendo makes a horror game, you get Luigi's Mansion, not you know. And that's not always a bad thing. After all, we can all agree that this probably didn't belong on Cartoon Network, right? Putting my biases aside, Phoebe and your unicorn would probably be treated better and perform better on the Disney Channel, since it does fit their branding better. Thank you, Trish. But I suppose that brings us to the golden question here. Why was the show picked up, worked on, and then dropped? Nick Alive has a news article from November saying the show was being worked on, and just a month later, it was dropped. In the article, Dana said that the branding was already a point of contention among the executives. Personally, I can strongly respect sticking to your guns on a creative work, and keeping as close to your vision as possible. You're you know, saying that because you're not getting picked up and treated. Yeah, okay, so like Nickelodeon has had an interesting history of people pitched to them. Yeah. Uh, one of the people who pitched to Nickelodeon is someone named Dave Kelly. Okay. Now, if you don't recognize the name Dave Kelly, you might recognize his nom de plume. Of Schmorky K. Oh my fucking god, Schmorky fucking. Oh god, I didn't. <laughs> what? So, so the most upsetting thing about that is that he was, I shit you not, days away from getting greenlit. Oh well, thank. Well, that would just. Good thing he didn't for Nickelodeon's sake, dude. <laughs> just throw that he, onto he the didn't... fucking Dan Schneider pile. Yeah, he didn't get greenlit because he made a bunch of hilarious demands about. The character being gender fluid and him being referred to certain pronouns and just, you know, schmarky shit. Like that, the you know, that's stuff probably that why was doing. Dana Simpson got fucking, she had a bunch of, probably had a bunch of outrageous demands as well. Yeah. Like, you notice that a lot of the cartoonists who really get ahead at like networks like CN and Nickelodeon, they tend to toe the line for a long time. Yeah, like Butch and Hartman, then, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Butch Hartman, uh, like uh, Joe Murray on Rocco's Modern Life, Craig Bartlett, um, and I'm trying to think of like other ones. Craig McCracken, Kennedy Tartakovsky, 
Like, when you think of the most successful cartoonists on those networks, they're people who just did the work. Yeah. Rob Renzetti, you know, they just did their fucking job. And when you think of the least successful cartoonists, which are like John Kay, John Ian Jones Quarterly. <laughs> nah, John Enter didn't even get in the fucking door. Uh, fucking Rebecca Sugar. Uh, like those kind of people, they kept on pushing. And they kept on fucking with the network. Sugar's lucky she fucking got in at all, honestly. I'm surprised. The yeah, I guess I guess they just realized that the demographic fucked with the show. Yeah. When and the show, boy, it was not good, but you know. I I know that she had her big fat black boyfriend that likes to lick her feet also get a show. That Yeah, fucking... yeah, Ian Jones Carter. Yeah. Yeah, nobody gave a shit about that show. I've heard it <laughs> was it dog shit? I got no clue. <laughs> it's it's a it it was okay. But like Oh, man, yeah, like, the first episode of Very Late, Zuki and I talked about how Rebecca Sugar and him do race play. Are you shitting me? They do race I am, play? I am shitting you, but we yeah. joked about it a lot. We Because I, I just love the idea of her going, like, like, now service me, Negro. <laughs> yes, mistress. Yes, mistress. Yes, mistress. Yes, mistress. Yes, mistress. licking her fucking toes, her gaudy-ass toenails or whatever. Oh man, and we be knew that Rebecca Sugar looks like a goblin, so I, I've I, all the prayers to Ian Jones Quarterly for doing that. Thank you, Ian Jones Quarterly, for for taking that bullet for plenty of other people. He just likes his girls a little autistic, you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah, like many do. Many it's do. unfortunately <laughs> not something many network executives respect. On the other hand, the yeah, show was based on Phoebe and her unicorn. Manager. I have to know exactly what the people behind the scenes were thinking. The facts of They were thinking the show sucked. They probably That's were, what they were thinking. They were probably picking it up because like, okay, this will be an easy show, you know, she's just a stupid web comic artist, you know. Get her in here, she'll be too ecstatic. She probably had a bunch of dumbass demands, you know. And they're like, okay, yeah. we're not gonna waste our time with you. Get the fuck out of here. We'll we'll green let enter. <laughs> If you say something again. Yeah, then yeah, then she probably did a bunch of incendiary internet webcomic shit. Like said a bunch of weird crap and probably, I don't know, knowing knowing a person like this, she probably sided with some horrible community. Probably. And then Nickelodeon went like, oh, let's let's disavow this person. Like networks networks have cut off people who have succeeded more for way less. Oh yeah, guys, like, you're all right. She did draw Ed, Ed and Eddie porn. That was something she, Rebecca Sugar yeah. did. Yes, yes, she did. Yes, she certainly did. Uh, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. What were you talking about? No, well, Rebecca Sugar is very funny to me because uh, I remember seeing an article on John Kay's blog where he would, like was singing her praises like way before Steven Universe and her being the progressive ukulele player she is. <laughs> John Kay was going like, this girl's great. She's amazing. She's bringing integrity to animation. And if you know about John Kay, you know he's like a, a, a weird sicko pedophile. Yeah. Right? Not so true. so the John Kay endorsement does not, not go good. very far. <laughs> not not a good co-sign to get. It's like having Dan Schneider <laughs> give you a yeah up. if if dan schneider said man this show is great i'm excited to see more girl feet in this show this is this is awesome i love it who the fuck is cement a very racist oh. black stereotype is that yeah is that cement, ce no cement was one of the uh <laughs> <laughs> One of the crystal gems who did not get greenlit because she had big nigga lips and it was a <laughs> it was a big fat black lady. So this was like this wasn't like 4chan, like yeah, like let's make No, things. this was a Rebecca Sugar This characters. was Rebecca Sugar. Okay. Yeah. I'm, yeah, she I bet Rebecca she, Sugar is racist, like just a little bit deep down, you know. Oh, I don't I don't doubt it. She's got a mandingo at home. <laughs> She fucking, she's probably like Calvin Candy talking to him, going like, listen here, you Negro. First, you will pleasure me. Secondly, you will suck my toe. about the series, what it is, and the main characters. All of this has not changed at any point. Dana claims that the people behind the scenes have changed, and that reflects a broader trend that's going on in the world of entertainment at the moment. Uh, brace yourselves. It's time for me to get a little, uh, conspiratorial. 
2022. Apparently, cement can't read, as per Alex's comment. What? <laughs> this is a joke, right? This is the shit I would come up with just to fuck with <laughs> the, the crystal gem who's just a nigga. <laughs> That's so fucked up. That is, that is so fucked up. Joe had a lot of news similar to the cancellation of Phoebe and her unicorn. It really was a small drop in the bucket compared to a much larger trend. I think a lot of people have begun to notice instances, but they're not at the point where they're putting the pieces together. Remember the news about Batgirl? If you need a review, Discovery and Warner Brothers had a corporate merger. The CEO, David... Most of this is just, I don't understand basic film business whatsoever and that these companies make very decisive and mean decisions yeah. uh, saltness monster sent ten dollars saying base stream as always but we'll have to catch it later so in the meantime take my shekels hope you guys are doing well thank okay. you very much have uh so <laughs> that's great sorry uh to interrupt but i may have figured out why dana simpson's not getting her fucking show made all right, give us give us the news to press. I'm gonna send you this comic, and uh, this is by her apparently, and oh, no. uh, you can just uh, throw it on there whenever you want, man. Because I know I had heard that name before. So I, Dana Simpson. Yeah, I'm not I'm not ready for this. I had to I? do a little digging. Hold on, fucking come on, load. It's taking my entire goddamn life. Sorry. There we go. This is the oh, comic. Okay. I think. Yeah. Oh. Oh no! It yeah. is the one I was yeah. thinking of. I know this comic too. Oh. Yep. God. Oh God. No. <laughs> this. You got. Are you, you have it pulled up on stream? We're we're pulling it up right fucking now. Here we go. Oh, Christ Almighty. Yeah. So I wonder why she did. Why didn't she get her show made, guys? Is it? Maybe the network is transphobic. Maybe hmm. she had too many demands. Hmm. Maybe it's because she made a comic of a small child kissing a dog. Hmm, that's interesting. Oh, God. God, this is this is awful. I knew I had heard that fucking name somewhere, so I had to do some digging. Sorry, while well, you were reading that super chat. No, no, you're, you're good, man. Like, I'm, I'm just... I'm just straight up baffled by by this. This is a lot to to take in. Yeah. I know I've I've seen I've seen the the kissing panel. I didn't know the context. It was made by her, Dana. That you can see her name right there, Dana Claire Simpson. Why would you sign this with your real name? I don't know. She's. I got no fucking clue, dude. Did you like? Did you ever? I I am not sure. Did you ever um, hear about like the Loud House creators, like weird lewd comics that he did? Did he do it of his own characters, fucking the the sisters? Because I know there's a lot of porn characters, <laughs> porn comic. No, like no. That. Surprisingly, no, no. He had a recurring comic of a child cat character, uh, trying to get lewd with his own mother. That's fucking weird and gross. Okay, then. very gross. Like I, didn't a, he also like, a, like sexually harass fucking other people <laughs> working on the show? Yes, yes. This was that that comic was well prior to his time at Nickelodeon, but uh, yeah, he he got very grabby at Nickelodeon with certain women, and he got kicked off his own show. But uh, oh god, this is like straight up disgusting. Yeah. So I'm looking into it right now. And yeah, like a lot of the comic, yeah, yeah. Oh, she even had the fucking little dog getting neutered from the kiss. She made a comic panel about it getting neutered. What the fuck is this? Nick, uh, Nickelodeon really does seem to harbor all the sickos. It does. Because uh, I, I have it's... to pull up that. <laughs> I have to pull up that Chris Savino comic now. It's called Rain Dog. In case you guys are curious. <laughs> R A I N E dog. Chris Savino cat con. Eddie Puss. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, like Oedipus. That's a that's a clever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Eddie Eddie Puss. Yeah. Pinterest. Oh no. Oh, of course, all the pedos are using Pinterest. 
disgusting. <laughs> I, I get it. It seems more like a joke, though. More so like... Yeah, yeah this is way more of a gag. This is, it's it's a kind of like a gross gag. Yeah, but it's, it's a gross gla it's, gag, but at least I understand it. I can't understand why there's... <laughs> like, this is like a joke on Oedipus, you know, and all that. Yeah, yeah. The other one is just a fucking little boy making out with his dog. And the dog gets to do it. Oh, why is, that, why is that so small? Oh, well. You, you get the point, though. This, this cat wants to fuck his mom. That's, cat wants that's, to fuck his mom. Okay. Yeah, that's the gag. <laughs> Sorry, we got a whole off, but I had to fucking bring that up when I found nah, that. No, nah, I appreciate you doing that because uh, <laughs> that's baffling. Yeah. So we we probably don't have to dig much more into why Dana Simpson didn't get her her show green. Wait, didn't we want to listen to him talk about mental health or some shit? That's the whole reason we were listening to that one? Ah, uh, I mean... We don't have to if you want to move on from the yeah, dog I mean, fucker comedy. I mean, this, this topic really sucks, and I don't want to... I don't want to hear about her mental health ever again. She's a, she's a dog fucker. <laughs> I can only tolerate so much depression. Come on, man. No, don't talk about the cat's massive tits, Selwing. Selwing's, Selwing's a pervert, man. This, like, Selwing, you gotta chill. I saw you in the comments talking about that rat girl that I had in the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. And now you're talking about the cat mom? Y'all need help. Get pussy. All you have to do is receive pussy. So, this is a script from Growing Around. This is Movie Mayhem. Okay. It's the third um, episode script to be written by Mr. Enter. He wrote it in practice of purely comedic episodes. So, we can, we can alternate on some voices. I don't know who you want to voice, but we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll alternate a bit. Let me just... I'll uh, flip you so, wait. Uh, who, are the, who are the characters? I can't remember it fucking cast. So Sally's the girl and then there's a stupid brother that no one cares about. And then there's the dad and then there's the mom. And yeah, and there's the mom. Um, I'll voice the news anchor. And I'll, I voice, I'll voice Sally. You can voice Robert. You can voice the 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 dad. Okay. So Robert's the dad. Sally's the girl. Yeah. Or I think Sally might be the mom. All right, scene. It's a Saturday morning and the Dunn family is eating their breakfast while watching television in the living room. Right now it's a news program. Timmy specifically is eating cereal. News anchor, also a child in parentheses. And the kid took a toy away from the store without paying. Studio audience goes, ooh, as in ooh, he's in trouble. God damn. They still Enter. have capitalism in their in <laughs> in their little child society. Why do they have a studio audience for the news? <laughs> also. Imagine but... them clapping about hearing like <laughs> the assassination of JFK and they just all start clapping or some shit. Uh, okay. There's there's nothing that some kids won't do nowadays. News anchor. When we get back, some really cute kittens. Oh, I guess Sally is the kid. Ooh, I can't wait. When commercial now from the makers of dull story the movie you've all been waiting for the one the only captain commando the commercial itself is a parody of gi joe taken up to absolutely ridiculous levels okay. all right you're robert okay i'm robert okay yeah wow that was my favorite series as a kid i can't believe they're making a new one I think I got that that enter impersonation. You, you, yeah, you nailed his autistic inflection there. You can't miss this. It's going to be totally awesome. It's got explosions and ninjas and tanks. Hey, Sally, can I see it? Sally looks at the television and sees the poster for it and what it's rated. Sorry, it looks like it's rated KO. Kids only. You're too old. Is stupid show, dude. <laughs> Man, that swamps. Hey, Robbie, language. Sorry, Sally. Are you sure there's no way I can watch it? Like, 
I'm fucking 30 years old. <laughs> you know, I, I can't watch a fucking show because my daughter's... I, I, I could just push my way in. I'm an adult man. Yeah. I could throw people to get in there. Sorry, maybe you can watch something for grown-ups. Eh, most of it's junk. That's probably how Edger unironically thinks, you know? He's like, why would I go watch Oppenheimer when I could go and watch the Paw Patrol movie? <laughs> I don't want to watch an adult movie. Timmy, talking muffled. Um, Timmy, that's not milk. That's paste. Oh, my Timmy. You want to voice Timmy? Timmy's the other brother, yeah. Gulp? Oh, no wonder it tastes so weird. That paste went bad. Anyway, what I was saying is that Linda was talking about a movie a while ago. That's included in the junk. Hey, well, there is one I'm looking forward to. Kissing in Caroline. I'm sure it'll change Robert's mind on my movies being <laughs> junk. This is supposed to, this is his attempt at a comedic fucking thing. This, this is shit. <laughs> Nameless, don't make fun of how I say sorry. I can't help it. <laughs> awesome. I'll take you guys to the movies later today. Wait a minute. I'm, if I'm not going to see Captain Commando, then there's no reason to go. Oh, come on. Try and have a little more fun than that. I mean, but what were you planning on doing instead? Well, I was going to do some studying. Dude, have some fun. This sucks. This is bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I know I said this, but this, he said this is his attempt at writing a comedic... Yeah. What was, I've only seen. Yeah, where's the, where's the fucking comedy? Where's I've seen comedy maybe at? one attempt at a joke, and it was that he was eating paste. But if that was in any other cartoon, fucking Edge would be like, "Oh, ha ha, he's eating paste instead of milk. That's so funny. That's so fucking funny." Yeah. <laughs> this is shit. <laughs> this is. I, I'd rather read the. I want to read the Adventures of Daryl Loyal Tat, not this garbage. <laughs> Shit, how long is the script? Well, yeah, we're not reading the rest of us. <laughs> Sorry, we can keep reading. Uh... No, we aren't. We aren't. Star Giant Productions. So this is the editor that Mr. Enter ended up firing. Okay. <laughs> we'll probably wrap up on this. Because have... I just, I just <laughs> think that this is hilarious that he, like, sent up this, this woman for, I don't know, being a jerk. Start. They have her fucking date of birth on here. God damn, that would be. Yeah, that's that's kind of upsetting. Oh hey, she. Oh hey, she just had a birthday. Look at that, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Star Giant Productions. If you want to come on here. (laughs) (laughs) Nah, if if this if this woman's as horrible as Mister Enter made her sound, then uh, no, I don't I don't want to talk to her. I don't want to talk to Uh, anyone from Mister Enter's little circle of fucking autism. Quite frankly, <laughs> yeah, I've I've got my own comfortable autist circle. Thank you very much. Yeah, that table read was shit, Sean. We didn't. <laughs> it was not. I couldn't get into fucking character. They were all retarded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you expect, man? When the script is dog shit, the read's gonna be dog shit. Look, it's it, like <laughs> take it for what it is. Third I would it all if we were reading Daryl Loyalty. That. Does- Absolutely, absolutely. But it's some real literature. Yeah, but Mr. Enter's little fan fiction about him not wanting to fucking <laughs> have a I job. I want to go to the movies. Star Giant Productions is a YouTuber who specializes in reviewing animation and has edited many of Mr. Enter's videos beginning in mid-2018 until her firing in June of 2021. Relationship team enter always gets me. Dude. <laughs> Post team enter. <laughs> All right, so we have we have oh, her her oh, numerous man, credits. She she did a bunch of shit for him. She she did. Yeah, these are really? all edited videos. God damn. Star Giant is infamous for being Enter's worst editor. <laughs> that sentiment shared by even Enter himself. You want to read? No, I'm curious. I can that's, read, yeah. that's fucked up. You want to read relationship with Team sure. Enter? <clears throat> On October 8th, 2021, Enter released a video detailing the various problems he and his teammates encountered while working with Star Giant, including but not limited to failure to recognize when previous conversations have ended, 
and frequently interrupting important conversations, ignoring attempts to talk to her about her behavior and editing work, mistreating, overworking, and underplaying, underpaying employees on for her own videos, leaking information prior to its announcement. In the same video, Enter explains many of the issues. Oh shit issues he had with her editing work such as her inability to get the timing of enters avatars right (laughs) your little stupid png tuber fucking guy failure to hide the black bars of episode footage presented in the four by three aspect ratio failure to hide or remove the logos from bootleg websites which she often took footage from using poorly cropped and cut versions of and her shadowy figure avatar, despite being given avatars with transparent backgrounds. Inserting content Enter never asked for. Example, the whip cracksing in the cans without labels. <laughs> Taking footage from other YouTubers without crediting them, including self-inserts of her voice and or OCs. While Enter admits to being at fault for not having higher standards, at the time, and for not firing Star Giant earlier, Star Giant frequently ignored critiques about her editing style and considered herself a good editor. Issues outside of Team Enter. While Star Giant is quite infamous for being Enter's worst editor, that's fucking hilarious that that just keeps coming up. Yeah, like, like, they they want to make a point. Yeah. This has got to uh, be <laughs> ran by Enter himself. In his it's, un- it's undoubtedly either written by him or ghost written by him many find that her work is not much better in addition to sharing many issues with the videos she edited for enter star giant was frequently accused of copying enter too much as many of her reviews contain critiques jokes and even video structures nearly identical to enters there is no star- fucking style in enters video what is that agreed yeah like i don't i don't know how you could plagiarize nothing star giant's cartoon network 64 was modeled after Enter's Nickorama, with the focus being on a series produced for Cartoon Network rather than Nickelodeon, including having thumbnails commissioned by Ava Berman, or A.B. Winks, who also drew thumbnails for the original run of Nickorama, among her other artwork for Enter. I, I want to mention something. I'm sorry I'm interrupting yeah. again. No, no he's complaining good. about, like, oh, she ripped off... Didn't you rip that off of Nostalgia Critic when he did, like, a bunch of movies, like did like all the yeah. December movies and like yeah. Disney and all that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but but his plagiarism is is not noteworthy apparently. Yeah, cuz uh, Enter himself isn't noteworthy. On July 13th, 2020, Star Giant commissioned Wes, then known as Hope, a moderator on Enter's growing around Discord server. <laughs> Ooh, well, always a fucking party there, huh? Uh, oh. With an animatic of the Growing Around episode Society of the Treasure Trackers, with the intention of releasing it in time for Enter's 28th birthday. Ooh, that's... Oh, shit. That's that's sad. I didn't know Enter was that old. <laughs> I told you! He's like almost 30, dude! You refuse to believe me! <laughs> no, he's he's over 30. He'd be 31 in 2023. Oh, I am right. He's 30. Fuck! Yeah. Star Giant expected the 22-minute animatic to be completed by July 18th, only for an infuriated West to cease work on it midway through production, after realizing what little time he had to work on such a project. The project was ultimately turned into a script reading of the episode in lieu of an animatic, which was deleted from Star Giant's channel following her firing. In January of 2021, Star Giant released a video entitled Top 20 Worst Animations of 2020, which received major backlash from the general public. Some of the most egregious issues include claiming that episodes of Pony Life and The Loud House contained uh, contained examples of pedophilia, claiming that Crimson Mayhem cut ties with Enter due to his opinion of Lauren Lauren Faust's DC Superhero Girls, and claiming that Randy Marsh of South Park caused the COVID-19 pandemic in the real what? world. What the fuck? What, did, what was that fucking... All oh, right, so it was like, the first one was like, okay, so they just screened on a cartoon fucking show, and then, no, uh, Randy Marsh caused and, fucking COVID-19. Yeah, and then, and then he went full Chris Chan dimensional version <laughs> saying that, that Randy Marsh caused COVID. Sick. 
fucking crazy, <laughs> dude. Do you want to read firing, and I'll read post team enter? Sure. <clears throat> okay. In June of 2021, Sarah, another editor on Team Enter. I'm sorry, I can't take Team Enter seriously. <laughs> Let's go, Team Enter! Created a new Twitter account for Enter, replacing the one deleted in January 2020 during the Nico Rama. As part of a plan to generate hype, Sarah replied to tweets asking if the new account was managed in anticipation of an official announcement of Enter's new social media platforms. However, when asked by former editor Crimson Mayhem if the account was real, Star Giant revealed that the account was managed, ruining the surprise. <clears throat> During a conversation about the incident, it was brought to the attention of Sarah that Wes was told by Star Giant that he was too suicidal and did so for brownie points. Fucking what? Prompting Wes to block Star Giant. <laughs> This combined with previous issues led to Team Enter led Team Enter to fire Star Giant. Oh man, you got your pink slip from Team Enter. Goddamn, too suicidal. So, that's that's something. I'm a, I'm afraid you're too suicidal. I don't know if you can work for for me. Uh, post Team Enter, following the end of her association with Enter, Star Giant would eventually cease communication with the other members of Enter's team, including Graceland, West, and Chikorita Cheese with Graceland citing her refusal to improve as a person as the reason for a disassociation from her. In the months following her firing, <laughs> start, I, I just find it baffling that it's considered a firing and not just blocking someone on Discord. Like, did, 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 Does Enter pay these fucking people? Like, Enter like, doesn't get any fucking money from this. Even, even then, that's still not an employee, you jackass. It's someone you, you paid for a commission. Team Enter. He's, he's... There, you, you, didn't, you didn't provide a contract. We, we know that this isn't a legal employment situation. Star Giant would claim that Enter was at fault for firing her for no reason in videos such as ranking people in the cartoon community. Oh, shit. We got to watch that one at some point. Uh, <laughs> that, that sounds fucking funny. We're never fucking going to be done with Enter, dude. No. Uh, nah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, the, we're the fucking dream team. We're Jordan and Scotty Pippen when it comes to making fun of uh, cartoon idiots. We need to make fun this, of more of them. <laughs> we, we really do. Just this stop team. next time, guys. <laughs> Please stop. Just stop. Oh, uh, is that his name? Please stop. I thought it was just no, stop. No, no, it is just stop. Oh, okay. That would be the video title. Would be please stop. <laughs> stop. Just stop. <laughs> this came to a head in September 2021 when Star Giant released a review of the DC Superheroes Girls episode hashtag Frenemies in which she defames Enter for firing her and alleges that he was happy about doing so. Following the release of Enter's expose video in October 2021, uh, however, Star Giant would post a video in which she would seemingly apologize for her behavior, only to later retract her statements following the turning red controversy in April of 2022 in the form of editing the description of the video. God damn, dude. Enter's it's, life is fucking bizarre. Like, all of it, his It really problems, is. It really fucking is, huh? He, like, all of his problems just feel like his own fault. He's just tripping over his own fucking shoelaces. There's no other Correct. Thing. In February 2023, Star Giant released a three-hour-long video entitled Addressing My Abuse. We gotta do a Star Giant video. Forget Mr. Enter. This, this bitch is funny. <laughs> which she would berate those that she believes have wronged her over the years, most notably Enter, to whom more than half the video is dedicated. The video was met with overwhelmingly <laughs> negative reception, with common issues, including, but not limited to, attempting to frame Enter and his teammates as abusers while defending her own poor work etiquette during her time as Enter's editor. Defending her statement of Wes being too suicidal <laughs> oh <my God>. uh, <laughs> by, by claiming she was speaking fast. Damn, she was the lyrical spiritual miracle. You love to see it. Using examples of Enter's other editors making mistakes to support her claims that she was Enter's best editor. Denouncing American citizens that rely on social security. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I bet you fucking hated that. You. Oh, <laughs> Holy oh, fuck. Yeah. Based star giant. Uh, social security income in an early draft of the video script. Using the testimonies of her friends to refute enters arguments at various points, criticizing those who have noted issues with her editing work or made responses to her videos, defending hosting a pedophile on her Discord server by claiming that she did not know that they were a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> Holy these, fuck, man. Both of these people are fucking stupid. The one writing this shit, so enter and this fucking dumb bitch. <laughs> oh. In response to the backlash, Starlight, Star Giant would unlist the video three days after its release, after which it was deleted four days later. She would then post an apology video entitled Be Better Today Than Yesterday in which she would express her regret for her actions in the previous video and promise to stop talking about Enter. However, this video would also relieve, receive backlash due to the, it consisting primarily of Star Giant defending her actions and claiming that she has not abused or gaslit anyone. In June 2023, Star Giant attempted to contact Enter via DeviantArt, intending to settle her issues with him, only then to berate him, claiming that he was abusive towards her and that his content had declined in quality since her dismissal. In response, Enter wrote a DeviantArt journal in which he detailed the various controversies in which Star... Oh, man, the writing on this. In which Star Giant was involved and stated that he is prepared to take legal action against her should she attempt to contact him or his teammates in the future. We both know that Enter cannot afford legal counsel. <laughs> Fucking no. Enter can barely that, uh, afford the trailer he stays in. That is a hysterical threat. Do you want to read YouTube career and I'll read trivia? Sure. <laughs> like Enter, Star Giant owns a YouTube channel on which she reviews various animated films, series, and shorts in a series called Ryanimation Reviews? It's shit. What does that even mean? Okay. I do not know. I okay. Another series of stars chronicles. The another series of stars chronicles. Good fucking punctuation. The various animated series produced by Cartoon Network over the years, aptly titled Cartoon Network sixty four. The series takes an in depth look at sixty four cartoons produced by Cartoon Network between nineteen ninety two and twenty nineteen. Much like Nick Orama did for the Nickelodeon, he really wants you to know that she copied him. Very similar to my series. Other series include Frog Tales and Pixar Path, which feature Star and Friends commentate over episodes of Amphibia and Pixar films, respectively. Pretty much what we do, but we look at <laughs> Mr. Enter videos. <laughs> As embarrassing. Yeah, we, we look at Mr. Enter videos and Admiral DT8 fan fictions. Uh, <laughs> trivia. Star is transgender and plans to undergo a sex change operation in the future. Certifiable Super Sitter was Star Giant's favorite video of Enter's. Before she was fired, Rebecca with an H considered Enter one of her favorite YouTubers and frequently called editing his videos her dream job. That would be. Ooh. You do Ooh, not that's... have very lofty dreams, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, I know. My like I I have some pretty exciting dream jobs that I will never do. Like <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> that's that's sad. That's straight up that's straight up sad. I just feel bad. Like this is your dream job editing videos for Mr. Enter Poorly. <laughs> like <laughs> it has been said that she along with Rosa Ray Ramsey also bailed on reporting Nekopon, a child predator. Like Crimson did, uh, like Crimson did, and kept her in her server for the total of eight months, and dodges anyone who speaks about it or wants to have a conversation about it, including Leo Convoy. Um, I'm not sure if you know about him, but he's a notable creep exposer, I guess. Okay. And have made claims stating that unless it has ever been in a court case, you can't call somebody a child predator. 
Whoa, whoa, what? <laughs> are you are you telling me that someone being a creep, they're not a creep until they're in a court of law? Yeah, you, you have to prove it <laughs> via the law, dude. Yeah. You could you could catch someone in the act and they're like reading a doujinshi about certain types of characters, we'll say, and go, hey. Uh, are you are you into children? And they would go. Um, am I in a am I in a court of law presently? I thought you were gonna go like. Um, actually, she's nine hundred years old. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Disgaea franchise, but she is a seven thousand year old demon. Reminds me of that one fucking video where the guy's like, "I'm not attracted to children. I'm attracted to women who happen to look like children." <laughs> Oh. Some shit like that. Just like, God damn, dude. Just shut the fuck up and die. Oh, man. It's like, can you imagine being the lawyer for these people and just being like, God damn it, man. <laughs> just stop talking. Just don't say anything. That's all you have to do. Yeah. Fucking Christ. Well, oh. well brother, I think that's where we're going to call it because uh, another three that, hours of that made my skin crawl. <laughs> Oh man, and I I hate to say we always have more of this guy. I kind of want to look more into Star Giant Productions because shit, we need <laughs> a shit. It's funny. We gotta, we gotta buy break. that video. We need a break from fucking Mister Enter. We've done. This has got to be like six and a half hours. We've talked about fucking. We Enter. got we gotta we gotta watch a knockoff worse version of Mister Enter. Complain about him instead at some point. Oh my god. Yeah, he's called Just well, Stop. So that's <laughs> Oh man. Just stop tried to shit. I think I told you just stop tried to like start shit with like tamers or brought him up rather, which I just don't yeah. like in general. So fuck. Oh, kid. I know. No, that that Just Stop kid is is a complete moron. I know he like, start didn't he like do some like big autistic fit like with LS Mark or something along yeah, those lines? Yeah, he so he he was allegedly manipulated by Daft Pina into making a video. Daft Penis, you mean? Daft, uh, yeah, he was manipulated by Daft Penis into making a video about Ellis Mark's wife, Veronica, who used to be Oni Plays' girlfriend. Yeah. And talking about their, their very large age gap, because I think she's like 10 years older than Mark. Whatever. They're adults. And they're adults. They're both. They're both adults. They can make that decision. Um, but you know, like just bringing up weird stuff that doesn't necessarily like involve him, right? Yeah. No, that was the whole thing. My big problem was the whole tamer. Leave me alone. You know, but he, like trying to get tamer to like join him like on a stream or on a video or some oh, shit. It's yeah, like, that's don't terrible. The fuck up, you know. That's terrible. Like, like you and I are both. Pretty big fans of Tamers. Yeah, we gotta watch some Tamers sometime. <laughs> we really, we really should. Um, but like, the guy should just be left to his devices. Yes, he he's fantastic. He does great work. I don't want this in his little. It's, I I hate at him. when I hate when people cover him because they cover him in this way where they're trying to figure him out, and it's like this guy has just been making free animations for thirteen years. Just let the guy do his shit. I just... that's. I don't want them to touch him. I don't want more eyes on him. Yeah, me neither. Me neither. Tamers, Tamers should just be allowed to do his crap alone. He's he's a great at what he does. He puts tons of farts in his animation, and and we love him for that. I, it makes me laugh, but no, you have him like, I can't tell if this guy's serious or not. Well, maybe you should figure out fucking, you know, just... Tamers, Tamers is so cool in the fact that he's like a very self-aware cow. He is. Like, he's he's all the stuff that Chris Chan wasn't during Chris Chan's Sonichu phase of going like, mm -hmm. yeah, I know this is stupid, but it makes me happy, so I'm going to keep making it. Yeah. Like, I, I respect the hell out of that. I'm just glad he never brought him up again, honestly. Like he did like one video on him because apparently he did a video on Sonic Underground, so Tabers commented under there, like did like a whole massive rant where it's like, You didn't watch all the episodes. Do you shit and not wipe your ass? You know? <laughs> like <laughs> Thanks, Tabers. Yeah, Tabers is amazing. 
uh, Sean, who, and, and I know Sean's a pretty good animator himself, but Sean says that Tamer somehow makes better animations than half these weirdos. And, like, I, I will say, before we wrap up, that Tamer's is actually, like, a pretty solid animator for he being is. a one-man operation. Being a one-man They're, operation. They yeah. have a style about them. Of course, you know, oh, my God, imagine Enter reviewing them. That would be the fucking, oh, yeah, that would be the worst thing. It's like Tamer's routinely, uh, like, shows that he knows how to animate in his episodes like he doesn't do it all the time and he uses like limited animation quite well but I think there are it, times where he'll animate like a sequence i think it looks better that way i think that it looks better yeah. that he just does it sparingly you know yeah but, it's very similar to what's done in anime where you'll have limited animation then you'll like allocate a lot of time to like one or two big sequences yeah in an and anime he's thing is Tamers is a good writer. He writes good jokes. Honestly, that, you know? Yeah, yeah, the jokes are good. He plots his like storylines well. Like, yeah, it's it's idiots like Just Off who don't have like a creative bone in their fucking body, who want to expose someone who's just making something that they like to make. Yeah, yeah, man, fuck Just Stop. What a cornball. Yeah, I <laughs> I kind of want to, but at the same time, I don't want to see Enter talk about fucking Tamers, because I know that would drive his fucking oh. piss to a boil. You absolutely know it would, dude. Yeah, he would. If he couldn't handle Legends of Chamberlain Heights, he couldn't handle watching a Tamers animation. No. Fuck he, couldn't, he couldn't fucking vibe with Ma uh, Bobby Moonbeam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is... <laughs> That's like one of my favorite fucking gags in all of the Tamers animation. So it's like when Bobby and the, the two other ones are in the car and he just has that random trap music playing in the background. <laughs> They're all just planning the heist. Yeah, that shit's Tamers hilarious. says that a lot though, like with um like it'll like the story will be going and then we'll cut to like two like random people to like of like five minutes you know just focus on their story like there was that one where like it was like a couple at like the gas station and then yeah. like they started fighting because they were bald or some shit like that yeah and and yeah and then mindy's dad shows up yeah like, it, it, like he'll just have random like cuts before like a b-plot starts like it, it, you gotta give it to the guy he knows what he's doing he does it's funny <laughs> my it's favorite like competent even storytelling like one of my favorite fucking jokes from all of it is the uh, one where it's the uh, dad and his son who like learned karate trying to get like the uh, food out of the uh, vending machine, and then oh, the son isn't yeah. strong enough, so the dad just like, kills him. He sacrifices his son because he's too weak. Yeah, and he just walks away. Yeah, and the whole point of that was just to show <laughs> uh, Uncle Chuck grabbing the bag of nuts. That was it. Yeah, and Uncle Chuck gets his ass slapped. Man. Kino. Absolute Kino. And well, depressed and uh, we'll, we'll have to do a Tamer <laughs> stream. We'll Sorry. have to do a Tamer stream. Nah, it's, it, honestly, I'm, I'm always happy to talk Tamers. Like, the, the fucking funny thing is, like, I got into Tamers through that Rogue stream when he first looked at it, and I was so intrigued by how stupid that stream was. Same. And I got I was... into stuff, and then I realized, wow, this is actually, like, really competently made. Same. I never heard of who was it? Was it fucking Liz that brought Tamers up? Or Im yeah, that I I think Liz knew about Tamers. Yeah, yeah. No, I fucking that was that was the same time I discovered. It. I was like, wow, this is amazing. This is fucking hilarious. But... <laughs> well, the Preston, it, it was a real pleasure having you on, man. It always is. Yep, um, of course. Yeah. So thank you so much for your time and everyone who uh, made it this far. Thank you for enduring this fucking madness watching some mr enter with us i think we learned nothing but we still came away with a lot so. no we learned that the uh, girl who made the uh, phobia in her <laughs> unicorn also drew a uh, dog kissing a child that was yeah, fun yeah man white girls dogs you know you know the rest yeah. <laughs> and we learned that star giant productions is the worst editor to ever work on Team Enter's productions. We also learned that. And she so. also ripped off his Nicorama, which he didn't steal from the Nostalgia Critic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we gotta end this. Hey, <laughs> we can just keep going, man. All right, well, y'all have a good night. Greatly appreciated. And, of course, peace, peace, peace. We out right Adios. the fuck